Black Entertainment Television presents Black College Football. Tonight, we come to you from the state of Indiana to bring you the Grambling State Tigers and the Rattlers of Florida A&M. The RCA Dome in Indianapolis is the site for the 17th annual Circle City Classic. And what a classic we have. The Grambling State Tigers are our first place team in the SWAC. Today, they battle the consensus number one in black college football, Florida A&M. Hello, everybody. I'm George Johnson. Well, Doug Williams, in his fourth season at Grambling State, has done a good job of getting his club on track. In fact, they're looking for a SWAC championship. But, of course, they still have some things to settle with Arkansas Pine Bluff and Texas Southern. What would really help them in those ball games down the road is a little momentum. They could get it with a victory tonight against a team that a lot of folks figure will not lose during the regular season in Florida A&M. I have two people in the booth with me today. We start off with the former player of the year in black college football with Howard University, the quarterback Jay Walker, who led his team to a national championship. You talk about Grambling, this is a club that is extremely talented, especially at the wide receiver spots with Scotty Anderson. Well, definitely so. And anytime we talk about a Doug Williams coach football team, you're going to have some offensive skill positions, players. Scotty Anderson is his offensive spark plug. Coach Williams used one word to describe Anderson, and that was smooth. Everything the kid does is smooth. And on the other side of the football, Coach Williams also understands that offensive players put people in the stands, but defensive players win championships. And this defensive spark plug and mainstay is Robert Taylor. Coach Williams definitely believes this guy can play on Sundays. Taylor better be ready to play today because Florida A&M brings it and brings it heavily. With that, we take you to the other man in our booth. A former Florida A&M Rattler went on to the National Football League, became an All-Pro with the Dallas Cowboys. That's Nate Newton. A lot of talent on this Rattlers club, but it starts up top with their wide receiver, Jaquay Nunley. Jaquay Nunley is a smooth player. He runs exceptional routes. He's got great hands. The guy's just outstanding. He's a super player, and he will be playing on Sunday somewhere. And yet, he won't break Jerry Rice's record of most receptions in a career unless his quarterback gets him the ball. And that's Quinn Gray. Super athlete, tall guy, 6'4". His specialty is the long ball. He can throw that with a lot of grace. But the deal is with him, a knock on him is at Youngstown last year in the playoffs. He was a little slow, cost him a game with the interception, but now he's standing in strong this year and doing a hell of a job. Well, the last time these two teams met, Grambling was 9-0. Legendary coach Eddie Robinson was on track to win 400. It was rainy, it was muddy, and Florida A&M would win that one 13 to nothing. We'll see if the Tigers come back with revenge next here on BET. Today's Black College Football Classic is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines brings freedom to the net with affordable fares and frequent flights. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of e-freedom. And by AutoZone, the more than 2,800 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by TiVo, TV your way. extending that hiss and they've done it all year long they are five and oh grambling state though four and one their only loss coming to louisville this year standing by on the field is the man who follows me everywhere i go when it comes to black college football joe i can't shake it joe claire hey what's up what's going on now you know how i do y'all got all the statistics and stuff up there but i got all the good stuff down here the bands the cheerleaders the fans i'm gonna show you everything is black college football. Y'all stick with me through the rest of the game. Back up to the three dudes up in the booth, man. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joe. The three dudes standing by. And he's right. I mean, when you talk about black college classics, this might be the most prestigious of all of them. I mean, they're going to pack 54,000 folks into this football game. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Grambling, they won the, the, t the, uh, the toss. And they will kick off to Florida A&M. Back deep, Jockey Nunley and Isaac Brown are your deep backs. This Jockey right there, your wide receiver. But as we said at the top of the show, is looking to break Jerry Rice's record for most catches in a career in college football. Rice with 301 when he played at Mississippi Valley State. And there you see the head coach for Florida A&M, and that's Billy Joe, who prefers to coach from the booth. And I 
guess at this point I bring the guys in. What do you think having the coach up there? At least he can't scream at you right away. Well, he seems to be all smiles right now, but come kickoff, we'll see if that smile changes to a frown real quick. Yeah, my understanding is the reason he moved up there, man, because this crowd is, so, is so tough, the guys can't stand to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you got a couple of stories when it comes to how tough Billy Joe could be. We'll oh, probably yeah. hear those oh, before yeah. this game is all set. So Grambling State will kick things off. And we are underway. Brown is going to take the ball at the nine-yard line. Work his way, find a little hole, find a little seam, find a little room, and get it out by the 39-yard right, line. Right, 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 right. A 30-yard return on that kickoff for Isaac Brown. So Florida A&M will get the football first, and they're led by the 6'4", 230-pound junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Quinn Gray. The mighty Quinn, they're calling him. And though he's nursing a bad knee, has been absolutely sensational this year, completing 52% of his passes. And folks, he loves to throw the football. Single setback behind Gray, who was throwing immediately. Here's Nunley. Nunley makes the catch and picks up maybe two right, yards on the play. And he's now 37 catches away from breaking Jerry Rice's record. Taking a look now at our backs and receivers. Gray, O.J. Marchbanks has really been impressive with this club. T.J. Hines and Anthony Norton are your slot receivers. Second down situation. As you see your offensive line, very experienced and very big. Not one guy on the offensive line is lighter than 300 pounds. Gray over the middle finds his receiver at midfield. That one is complete to Nunley. And for some reason, Nunley has just been, he's been wide open for two plays. And don't tell me that Grambling State did not know defensively that they were going to go to him. As you see the defense, Parsons, Beverly, Birds, and Daly. That was actually your front for Florida A&M. On first Play down, Linebackers for Florida A&M, Patrick Burroughs and Alex Fortson inside. And Burroughs is your leading tackler. But with Grambling on defense, we'll see those guys a little later. Second down, and that was incomplete. Gray's got to be careful there on that pass attempt. He's got to recognize what they're doing. Grambling's giving them a cover two look, and that outside divider, outside sector is not going to be open. You have to look a little bit more underneath in the middle of the field. Third down situation for Gray. Third and five, they've got to get it to the 40-yard line. Great protection. Gray has all day. He has a man open. Look it up there. And the catch was made by Charles Allen. Right there. How, how Charles Allen got that wide open? I don't know, but they had perfect, perfect, protect, perfect protection. Uh, Grandma cannot rush three men and, and expect do anything to Quinn back there. I mean, three, five on three, that's not going to work. Take a look at this. they got three men rushing with a stunt. Stunt doesn't get there. Five guys blocking three. You could sit down and drink a soda back there if you wanted to, couldn't you, Nate? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, man. Jay, have you ever had that much time? <laughs> <laughs> First and goal inside the five at the four for Quinn Gray. Florida A&M has been known to strike quickly. Inside handoff to Mark Fumble. He fumbled the football. Grandma's he fumbled it. it at the one yard. That's the type of momentum that Grambler has to, has to do. They have to knock the ball loose. And when the offense come out, they have to control the, the tempo of the game. I mean, I see what happens here. I mean, you know, Doug talked about his linebacker court being the strength, and it seems like a linebacker, yeah, made a play for him there. Ball's on the turf, Grambler swore. It's kind of a bend but don't break defense. Terrence Dukes recovered the fumble. And they say that this linebacking core for Grambling State is the strength of this unit. They will hit you and hit you hard. Basically right there, they had great blocking. And the running back could have walked in, but he's got to bring the ball with him. <laughs> I don't Get know it. about that walk part when you got a guy waiting to put his helmet in the goal line. Hey, you don't do too much walking movement. in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> That's Dukes right there. He's a junior. 6'2", 220 pounds. One of the leading tacklers. So here comes Himes, and Himes now, the quarterback for Grambling State, All right, handing it off in the middle. Himes is a junior from Hitchcock, Texas, 6'4", 200 pounds, and they really like him. Doug Williams talked about the fact that he has shown him all year long that he's extremely tough. 
it's got to be tough, especially when your first series in the game, and this big game is on the one-foot line. Uh, now he's on the one-yard line. He's got to show some toughness here. Not a not too good a position to be in for your first start. And talking to the assistant head coach, uh, Jimmy Joe, he said we're going to put seven, eight up there in the box. So Grambler got the work cut out for him trying to run against him. Here we go. Second down and long. I formation. Himes gives it inside to the first back, and then Himes tries to help out a little bit by doing some pushing. That was Boudouin. Rodney picked up a, maybe a yard, so that'll make a third down and long as we take a look now at the offense. And today's starting lineups are brought to you by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Micah Mays actually will alternate with Randy Himes. Himes is now your quarterback. Young Jones, Scotty Anderson, the all-time leading receiver in Grambling State history. Third down and long now for the Tigers. And here's Himes. Got time. Going deep. Looking for a receiver. Oh, oh my! Oh, Anderson still has him. He's at the 40. Smooth. He's at the 30. Will he get Smooth. caught? At the 15. 10. Smooth. Touchdown. Oh, Smooth. my! A 98. <laughs> the receiver looked so smooth in everything that he does. Ball was hanging up there. He went up and got it and made it look like a routine catch. It was a nice play by the young man, but the offensive line did a serious job. Uh, Larry McTay, the center, held his guy. They turned it to protection towards uh, Jerome, uh, Jerron Daly and to stop this pass rush. And he had, the quarterback had all day to throw. Credit Anderson with the ability to make the adjustment on the play. He was double covered and was able to come back within one of the defensive backs and make a great catch. And oh my. This is the they missed point. the extra point. The attempt by Lawrence Richmond is no good, but there's your man, Scotty Anderson. What a play. 98 yard touchdown catch and run. And with that, Grambling State leads early six to nothing. We'll have more from the Circle City Classic right after this. And as you take a look at this play here, you can see exactly what went wrong with the Florida a defense. They're playing a cover two. The safety on the left side will come into your screen right about now. Takes a poor angle. He's lost. He loses himself. His delirium. And Scotty Anderson goes up and makes a smooth 98-yard touchdown reception. That was a random boss type acrobatical catch. And for Anderson, that's his sixth touchdown on the season. An absolutely brilliant play. So here comes Florida a and trailing six to nothing. And Bowley is dragged down on the kickoff return. Credit the tackle to Denmark Reed. That'll be a nice wake-up call for the Florida a and offense. You can't get all the way down there and not put the ball in there in the end zone and end up with some points. And you can look at the scoring drive, a minute and a half, three plays, and highlighted by the 99-yard touchdown pass to that young man right there, Scotty Anderson. And when you think of all the great receivers that have come out of Grambling, unbelievable that he's the all-time leading receiver. Doug Williams, stoic, and yet it's got to be a little happy inside. But there's still a lot of football to be played, and he needs his defense to pick it up. Great. Oh! Zone blitz. And credit defensively, the linebacker, Mark Hall, with making the shot right there to force the incompletion. Watch, watch them fake a blitz. Number 91 drops into the, to the route 51, excuse me, and puts a smack on him, trying to make a hot green throw. Hall, Jr., number 51, a defensive end. So when you get a defensive end dropping back like that, that's not too bad. Second down and 10. Gray with a little pressure, escapes, he can run, but not a lot of room. And again, I don't want to harp on it, but when your linebackers are strong, you're not going to find a lot of room to do some running. They're bringing the blitz from everywhere, up the middle, off the corner, uh, outside back is coming, everybody's just, just bringing the heat. Like right here on this replay right here, the outside guy comes, you have to escape and try to make things happen with his feet. Third down and five. Again, single setback along with Gray, who's going to roll to the right, got all Run the day. He's going to get a first down, forced out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. Forcing him out is the middle linebacker, Robert Taylor, but not before Gray picks up the first down. Good mobility shown by the quarterback there. 
room to run, move the sticks. You were coming to this game thinking that Florida and them would strike first, make things happen to make Gramlin go into a scramble mode, but right now it's the other way around. Gramlin's got uh, Florida and them in the scramble mode. First and 10. 39 yard line is the football. Gray, who has run for 12 touchdowns, or actually run for six, thrown for 12, but just saying that he has no problem running the football, and if Grambling State goes back defensively, he may find some room. We have a flag on the play. Conference with the officials. They call it the Gulf Coast offense here at Florida a and With the rack boy. With the rack boy. <laughs> What's that rack stand for? Run after catch. Run, Run after, after catch. catch. <laughs> like me, the only person running right now is Scott. <laughs> Before this snap, false start against the center, Florida, five yards. Smile has gone away a little bit from uh, Coach Joe's face. But down 6 nothing. I guess that'll happen. But what a winner Billy Joe is, folks. I mean, this guy won at Central State, came here, turned this program around, and one of the top teams in the nation. But you know the Tigers are up for this football game. First and 15 is the drone blitz. And this time he drops it off to Nunley. Nunley makes a nice move, and Nunley picks up 16 yards on that play and a first down. 16 yards and like Big Nate said before, most of it was the run after the catch. You can see here's another zone blitz. They're trying to confuse the quarterback. Right on his fleet. He makes a little five-yard pass. Nunley turns into a 16-yard gain for a first down. That's what a rack boy is, run after catch. Gets the ball inside Tiger territory. And they try that inside handoff and nothing doing. O.J. Marchblanks is met very quickly by Grambling, and that was Calvin Pearson, a very active safety coming up to make the tackle. And we've got another flag coming in at us right now, thrown over at the 40-yard line. And nature counting as if you may have too many men on the field. Grambling like that may have 12. I'm not sure, though. Illegal substitution. Possible. Illegal substitution. Oh, they have 11. Sideline warning. Well, Grambling, I mean, it's surprising. As prestigious as these universities have been, they've met only 16 times prior to this. We'll go into the series in a second. Second down and 13 for a first. Great. gets rid of it. Was that more of a great coverage downfield? That was great coverage right there. The guy came around the back and hit him in his back. Uh, he just barely got rid of it, but the, the pocket is there. The guard's job as, as being a guard, you have to keep the pocket deep. And as a tackle, you have to keep it wide. See right there? Give him a chance to step up into the pocket. He just barely releases it before they get to him. But that right there was more of a coverage hit than sort of protection breaking down. Third and long. Two receivers split to either side. I don't think we've seen one of those formations, and we won't, we're tight ends coming to the football game. Third and 13. Got to go back across the field. No, no. This one's intercepted. No, he was in trouble. And the Tigers have come out and played unbelievable defense early on. That's Denmark Reed with the interception. You know he had to be in a little bit of trouble. You got a half row here to the left. Stop, sees nothing here on the left side. You never throw the ball back late across the middle. Never's a long time, but you never throw the ball late across the middle. He'll continue to learn upon that. And that's his first interception of the year, ending a great streak he had of consecutive attempts without an interception. Jay, it's unbelievable, but Doug Williams told you, he said, listen, we're going to play a lot of deep in this, a lot of deep zone on these guys, and it looked like that's a perfect example of what they've been doing defensively and have guys in the right place to make those kind of plays and create those turnovers. So on first and ten, Grambling State now with the football. They hand it off inside. And that goes to Michael Young. There's nothing happening right there. Like I said before earlier, they're putting the eight men up there. They're daring you to run. They're hoping you uh, they can disrupt your running game and your passing game with putting guys in the box and blitzing off the corner up the middle 
and just all around. Which is smart because if you're Florida a &M, you don't think they can score with you. So and obviously if they're scared of the offense, they're going to try and keep you off the field. So if you know they're going to come out trying to run, you want to stuff the run. Boudouin and Young are your running backs behind high. And a whistle. And it is still relatively quiet in this place. Keep in mind that we're in Indianapolis. So we're really not in the home of the Rattlers or the home of the Tigers. And a lot of folks will come to this football game. But it may take a quarter or two before they decide whose side they're going to take. You know what? I think they're waiting on Florida and them to explode. And Gramlin has stunted that game. You know, so people sitting here more like in shock. You know, last week they was up, what, 10 nothing, 12 nothing. This, hey, right now they're on their heels, man. Don't know what's happening. Both teams with five yards penalty-wise. Second down. Here's high. Some good protection. The little field's open. And this time, a little dump as he finds Young. Young's got first down yards and forced out of bounds at about midfield. Boy, what a nice little play by Hines right there. That's a great job by the quarterback. Route took a little long time, to, took a while to develop, bought himself a little bit of time by moving his feet, getting out the pocket a little bit, to buy some time to let Young come across. See here, he's got the rush in his face, Young's coming across, he's got Anderson behind him, take the guy that's right in front of you. And he great. goes the shoulder here, and they get physical, good straight on. And the great thing about him, he showed a nice touch. For a guy who played wide receiver wide last year. 22-yard pickup on that play. And now they'll give it to Young. In the backfield, he'll pick up maybe a yard. And Pat Burroughs came up to make the tackle. You get a good eye right there on Jerron Daly, who came in the season, one of the top players in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And just came up with an assist. Now, they're going to take this guy. They're going to move him at a defensive end, a linebacker. They're going to play him everywhere to keep people off from him. He's not a very big guy. You know, he's, he's just a, a, a super athlete. 6'3", 225-pound senior from Miami, Florida. Pickup of one on that play, second down and nine. Delayed handoff. Young, nothing doing, and guess who's the man in on the play? Daly. There he is. Kind of reminds me of that freak they had in the NFL by the name of Javon Kurtz. Oh, he's. Well, that's not a bad effort. That's not a bad. To. You can you <laughs> compare him to a lot of freak there. <laughs> he does a great job staying at home. He's responsible for that outside portion of the field there. Didn't overcommit himself to going for the run inside. You're not going to bounce it out on that guy there. If I'm not mistaken, Curse, another Florida young man. Hey, you know, that's where that happens. Oh, I shouldn't that. have gotten that that's Nate going. I shouldn't have gotten Nate going. Third down now in 13. And got a whistle as Himes wants to go over and talk to Doug Williams, a former great quarterback himself in the National Football League. His Tigers lead this one by six. And you can see on the face of the coaching staff a little concern with the Grambling State Tigers. Tigers coming off a victory over Prairie View last week, 47 to 7. They're at this pace here, if Grambling keeps up, Billy Joe will be down on the sideline by half <laughs> Shotgun formation for Hines. Good pressure by the Rattlers. Oh, yeah. And look at the play. Inside by Evie Parsons. Evie Parsons came off on, on William Jackson, got the corner, and just and applied the pressure, made the quarterback run around the scramble. Randy Hines had to use a little bit of that athletic ability to try to get away. See right, right here on this play right here, he beats around the corner with a stiff arm, drives him back. Randy Hines almost gets away with his athletic talent, but Evie Parsons got some strong hands. Very lucky not to fumble that football, too. Second sack on the season for Parsons. So now, after the loss of 12, Florida a and will get the football back. Isaac Brown is back deep to receive the punt. He's averaging eight yards of return, takes this one at the 35-yard line, and good coverage by Grambling State as Brown picks up maybe two yards on that return. So when we get back, Florida a and will have the football inside their own territory at the 38-yard line. More right after this. George Johnson along with Jay Walker, Nate Newton, Joe Claire's on the sideline with us. First down situation for Florida A&M as they trail six to nothing. 
The pass is incomplete. It was intended for T.J. Hines. Gremlin is keeping them off balance. They don't know. Gremlin usually lines up in a 4-3 defense, but they're bringing everybody up on the line, picking their spots, and they got right now they got the Rattlers out of sync. Nobody knows what's happening on the blitz. Second down and 10. Another quick pass, and it seems as if Gray is forcing a little bit, Jay. Well, you know, you got to think about it. This is the guy that's gone the whole year without throwing an interception right now. One of the reasons why his team started to believe in him was he wasn't turning the ball over. You're getting a big game, crowd is nice interception in your second series of the game he's thinking a little bit now he's gonna have to prove himself and this will give be a good gut check time for him right now can you collect yourself in the middle of a play you know what i mean next play you need time to collect yourself that'll be the question third down and ten gray going deep look at the guy receiver and overthrowing pass was intended for charles allen you asked that question earlier can a guy collect himself in the middle of a play. Yes, he can. But with Youngtown hanging over his head, he's trying to say, hey, here it goes again. But if he just gathers himself, drop it out to his back, make a little quick deal over the middle, get his rhythm back, he'll be okay. And Nate is alluding to the Youngstown State game that they lost last year in the semifinals. Right. When Gray threw an interception that Youngstown State then came back and scored and beat them right. at the time Florida A&M was in the league. Fourth down situation for the Rattlers. They'll punt the football. And back deep for Grambling is Walter Williams. Good roll. Good bounce. Rattlers are gathering. And that ball's going to roll inside the five yard line down to the three where Grambling State will take it first and ten. That's a 57 yard punt. The Rattlers trail by six. And the Tigers have the football. Six twelve left here in the first quarter. Grambling, State, and Florida A&M. As you take a look at the series, nine to seven as Grambling leads the series between these two teams. Their first meeting was back in 1945. Grambling was called Louisiana Normal at the time. <laughs> Normal. <laughs> But the way they're playing, they're anything but normal right now. But boy, high inside handoff. And Mr. Beverly says, welcome I to ideally, Indianapolis. Ideally, you would feel that having a punt so well well placed inside the five-yard line would be a good thing. But Mr. Anderson's already got one 98-yard touchdown under his belt. Why not add a 95? We'll go along with it. Yeah. And they give it inside to Rodney Boudouin. And Doug talked about the fact that I have several sets. When you see Boudouin in, we want to run that football inside. Right. What they're doing now is right. using two tight ends to kind of neutralize the four main in defense. Here's Himes, quick pass. Finds his tight end, and you talked about it. And then he's gang tackled. And that looked like that was Jesse. Randy. Or Sean Jesse, that is. Uh, Randy Himes. And Doug is doing a great job controlling this tempo, giving you all these differences, two tights, three wides, one running back in the backfield. And they're doing a great job just keeping the tempo of the game. And this is what it'll take for them to stay on top of the Florida A&M team. Six-yard play on that one. As Gershon Jesse with his just his fourth reception on the season. A gang tackle. For, he's trying to sting him. Big tight end like this, hard to bring down. Third down situation for Himes. Good protection. Got some room. Oh, what a move! Was that a crossover dribble or what? <laughs> we knew that he was a basketball player. Uh, for those of you that don't know, he does play on the Grambling State basketball team as well. And he showed a nice little crossover there. But did he come out? Was that a playing run? Uh, do you think he, uh, like right here, was that a playing run? He barely looked and just tucked the ball and took off. Nice Watch the plant. Uh, crossover. <laughs> Last year's wide receiver. Is that Allen Iverson or now, is that a football Now, player? my question is, what's going to happen film day on Monday when they start to run that back and forth and the man who got crossed up? <laughs> He'll be the, the subject of a lot of jokes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Rashid Rashawn being helped off the field. Let's go down to the field with Joe Claire. 
check this out. Check this out. I'm down here on the field. I was talking to my man Mark Hall from Alabama, uh, defensive end for ground. He said they ain't think about that Heisman Trophy dude on the other side of the field. That's what he said. Anyway, I'm with my man Guy Black, a uh, uh, radio uh, hey, uh, lesson here in WTLC. We doing it right. You know how we do How you feeling? It. I'm all good, man. Shout I'm out real quick. Shout out real quick. Hey, I want to shout out to all my people in Robbins, Illinois. That's why I was born in Robbins. All right, we can't do no more. Okay. Um, but we down here having a good old time. Y'all make some noise. <laughs> Back up to y'all upstairs. Back up to y'all upstairs. Must be on the grandma's sideline, Joe. <laughs> yes, he is. They're making noise because they lead six to nothing and just got a first down. And inside, that's Boudoir. And Boudoir, as you say, getting stung, but they're going to start wrapping him up. Yeah. As you can see a flag now has been thrown. I think that's a hole in it, I'm not mistaken. I was, yeah, holding against Grambling. I was down on the sideline yesterday uh, doing the walkthrough, talking to Marsha Hayes. He was just howling his left tackle. Uh, Frank Livingston, 6'6", 300-pound senior, senior. He said he's got potential to be a pro, but he just got to light a little fire up under him and make him jump and do things and dominate. And I talked with the guy. I said, hey, bro, you want to be where, I'm, where I've been? Or you want to be back home telling the fellas you should have been there? <laughs> oh, then, on the offense, 10 yards, Jonesy. First down. You guys are right on it. That was a holding call. You know, when you look at these offensive lines, Nate, and you see 300, 300, 318, 320 going across, were they that big back in the day? Nah, nah, definitely. We was a smaller group of guys. Believe it or not, I was around about 256 when I played the thing. <laughs> Sweet and slim. <laughs> and very, very smooth. 256? 256. <laughs> First down, and let's make it like 20. Pass. Get rid of it. And he's able to get back up to the 10-yard line, close to the line of scrimmage. He may have lost another yard on that play. He did a real good job. They, had, they tried to set up a screen pass to the left. It wasn't there for him. For him to get back to the line of scrimmage was phenomenal. Look at this. You can see the back here. Take the fake. Try and sneak out underneath the lineman and get rid of the ball for a screen. He couldn't do it. You've got to be careful. You don't want to have that ball dangling around there like he does. But you can't teach this right here. That's just natural ability to be able to run through a tackle like that, get back to the line of scrimmage. But he also didn't expect for Jerron Daly to be in his face that quick <laughs> with that pressure. I mean, when you do a screen, you know, you want to let him kind of uh, rush in after you bang him one time. But this guy didn't even slow uh, Jerron Daly down. Well, last year, Daly had 18 sacks. So we know he has the ability to get in the backfield. Here's Young on second down and long. And Young takes a shot but gets him back to the initial line of scrimmage, the 21-yard line. That was a great bit of running right there. I don't know if you can see that there, what the running back did. He got the ball. The hole wasn't there initially. Now, you can appreciate this. He waited for the guard to kick out the block, got real small, and exploded through the hole there and laid a lick at the end of that run. That was a nice run. That was a nice job by Kevin Thomas and William Jackson on the right side there. Look at that hole there. He jumped through. Boom, boom. Plenty moves, baby, but the rattles are trying to sting, but a little bit too late. Troy Hart is the one who came up and made that little, gave that little stinging shot. All right, no hands. No hands. Down. And another good pass and another good catch by Scotty Anderson. And I guess we're starting to get a feel as to why this guy is an All-American candidate. Right there, he has a little limp. He got hit there, and he coming up with a little limp. Uh, I think Troy Hart uh, may be uh, shattering him the whole game. Uh, Troy Hart has just moved over uh, this year to the cornerback position, but he, they say he's something special. 4 3 40 speed. Just supposed to be a great cover guy, but right there, Scotty got the best of him. Hart, who played two years as a wide receiver, is number nine on the defensive secondary of Florida AM. But thanks to the catch, and look at Anderson. Boy, he looks like he's in a lot of pain. They need him. They really do. First and ten after Anderson's 10-yard catch, and they give it inside. And you're looking at that center. That's center. Gonna... center. You're looking at, you keep looking at that offensive line. Uh, yeah, Marsha Hayes said he's got a nice center, and, and, and Larry Matave. Matevia. Matevia, and they call him the Big Mac, and they, and they running right behind him and making some yardage. And Matevia is the junior from Baton Rouge, number 50 who's got the job of trying to keep Dwayne Beverly and Cedric Bird off Hyman and these other running backs, and that's no easy task. Picked up three yards on that play. Watch the middle of the field. There they go. They're attacking the cover two. Oh, ho, ho. what a catch by Levi Washington. Despite this, the lick by John Battle, 
Washington was able to hold on to the football. John Battle, nice hit, celebration. You need to stop that. I mean, it's a first down. Is he playing the game in his own head or is he playing it on the field? <laughs> I mean, you, how are you going to dance on a first down? You have more respect for Levi Washington in that case there. Thank you. you get hit, you get up, dust it off. It's like you've done it before. Well, with Scotty Anderson now out of the football game, and I haven't seen him come back. Is he back in? But Levi is the second leading receiver, and they're going to lean on him a lot more if Scotty's not in the game. Inside handoff again. And that's time to go to Boudoir. Got to like what the Grambling offense is doing. FAMU came out and tried to just play a cover two, saying our front seven can handle yours. Now they've made FAMU change their defense. Florida a &M does not want to change their cover two defense. The last play there, after they hit that pass down the middle, they're now playing a three deep zone, which is a lot easier to pass and run against. Right, right now you got Billy Joe that's saying, boy, I can't <laughs> stop him blitzing, so I better back up and make sure I cover every base. Look at that Florida A&M defense, which has been outstanding, forcing 17 turnovers, score three, blocked seven kicks. But Grambling is content to just keep the football on the ground, work the inside interior of this defense. And talking and to Doug yesterday, I said, hey, Doug, I know y'all got to run the ball, control it, mix it up. Oh, no, we just going to throw the ball. We're going to throw it all over <laughs> everywhere. We're going to try to, hey, you've got the score. You didn't hey. believe him, did you? <laughs> you know, that's why I walked away. <laughs> hey, I've been knowing Doug since the U.S. of L. day. <laughs> and he has just been content to just give it inside to Michael Young and Rodney Boudoir. And they've worked themselves downfield. Here's Hines. Quick pass. Complete to Washington, who oh, loses nice two tacklers. Nice move. Graham is doing a real good job of dictating to the defense. Me, on the de as a defense, you want to dictate to the offense. Grambling is shifting up some formations, making Florida a and do a lot of things they just don't feel comfortable doing. Florida a and has gone to a three-man rush. Look at the quick out route you have here, followed by a curl. Makes a nice little move here. Bad tackling. Bad tackling. On, on FAMU's part. Strong running. Strong they may running. have a little rack boy over there. Washington, <laughs> he made a couple plays already. That is rack boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 17 receptions on the season for Levi after that catch, the senior from Tallulah, Louisiana. And we've come to the end of the first quarter. And the Tigers have been in control. They've held on to momentum. They've held on to the football. And they're holding on to the lead. It's 6 to nothing. The Tigers over number one in black college football, Florida A&M. More after this. Look at our Southwest Airlines first quarter stats and one of the interesting things to see is the passing for Grambling State. Though they picked up 98 of those 167 on a bomb to Scotty Anderson. But also look at time of possession. I, I, I know right now uh, Billy Joe is furious. I mean he was thinking he was going to control this game in the tempo. But Doug is taking away from like I said with the multiple sets. The two tight ends and changing the fullbacks and uh, the fullback and tailback. And banging them like with a thunder and lightning type situation. Well, they expect over 54,000 folks to come in here at the RCA Dome, and slowly but surely, it's starting to fill up. Yeah. As you can see, the spots are few. They're few. We might have to wander down here with Joe before it's all said and done. First and ten for Grambling State, who leads six to nothing. They're going inside to Michael Young, and Young has been pretty impressive here in the first half so far, picking up some quality yardage. Running behind that center, Big Mac, boy, Big Larry Mac. He's <laughs> making a lot of things happen, boy. I know Cedric Bird and Dwayne Beverly saying, what's up with this guy? They're clearing out the holes, and uh, what they're doing is they've, they're being very effective in their running. They've got a three-man rush they're facing right now, and anytime you know it's a lineman, Big Mac, anytime you face a... A defensive line it's only got three linemen in there. You're supposed to win. You're supposed to be able to run the football. Those are dominant because they, they're double team blocking, coming off hidden, and going to the next level. Shotgun formation as Young picks up seven on that play. Young again with another carry, and this time takes it inside the 20, close to a first down. But when you look at uh, FAMU's defense, uh, Jerron Daly, Cedric Bird, these guys are 6'3", 225, 6'4", six, uh, six, 26. These are not big guys, you know. They rely on their quickness to make things happen. And right now, they're just lining it up and just taking it to them. Hey, we're going to hit you in your mouth. Can you stand there? <laughs> Can you take it? 
Every now and then the law of physics does take over. Yes, it does. When you look at that defensive front for Florida A&M, they're going to have to start to snap those chin straps and bear down a little bit because they trail six to nothing with 14.07 left here in the first half. This game undefeated trailing six to nothing, and I would assume that games are won in the trenches, and this one's being won in the trenches. So far, so good, but you know what? It's still, a, it's still a, what, the Gulf Coast offense, so at any time, Florida A&M can strike, but right now, uh, them G-men got their Tommy guns out and blasted away. <laughs> So here goes Grambling State, the G-Men, with a first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Inside handoff, nice move by Young. Young did a good job to stop at the line of scrimmage and pick up three yards on the play. Very impressed with the way Young runs the football. He has the patience, which is one thing that your offensive linemen like. A running back with patience. Runs very hard, not afraid to give you a little stiff move if he needs to. Look at the patience. Holds not there, wait on it, breaks outside, cuts back inside, lowers the head. As you can see, the Florida and them got a lot of guys to the ball, but that first tackle is always missing, and that's what Young is doing, making that first tackle miss, and that's where you get your, your, your third and threes and your third and two for that second effort. Greg Ray made the tackle, but not until Young picked up four yards, so that makes it second down and six. And now we have a flag thrown at about the nine, and it looks like a delay of game. And those are the kind of mistakes you can't have, especially when you're playing a number one and right. you're trying to make some moves and you're inside the red zone right now. You can't be going back. As in the top of the Grambling. All timeout before the snap of the ball. So they get a timeout as opposed to a penalty. And that's a lot better news. Hey, that's, that was a smart thing. I mean, Doug don't want this timeout to go, but hey, <laughs> smart move on Mr. Hines. One of the things you got to realize, if you are Billy Joe and the Florida A&M Rattlers, as poorly as you played in the first quarter, you're only down by six. You're not down by seven. You're down by six points. So that, that extra point could be kind of crucial here. It'd be interesting to see if Grambling gets a touchdown here, if they decide to go for two or if they just go for one. I agree with you. But you know, the way Doug is mixing this thing up and calling this game. <laughs> hey, they're playing chess out there. That's right. <laughs> and they're going to have to start thinking about moving the ball on their own. The defense saying to themselves, do we have to win this thing? One of the things we Coach have to Williams, win this thing? One of the things Coach Williams, I'm sure he's telling his quarterback right now as he's still yelling at him as he's running onto the field, is definitely want to make sure you don't turn the ball over here and don't get sacked here. We're close enough now where we've got at least three points on this drive. If we hold on to the football, don't turn it over, we're going to walk away with some points on the board. As they're talking to him yesterday, he said we do have to score at every opportunity. Right. Well, Himes can can throw the football having completed just 47 percent of his passes coming in but he is fourth in the conference in passing look for him to attack the middle of the field a little bit here too three receivers split to the left your sole set back is young second down six got him open oh just missed him Great call by the offensive coordinator there. I know Doug wishes he could have that play back and just call the same play. Pass was intended for Levi Washington. And I thought the out receiver had missed his assignment, but he had something going to the inside guy. Oh, yeah, he was just clearing it out right here for the guy to go deep. Busted coverage, outnumbered. Nobody within 10 yards of him. Sometime a quarterback, when he see that, he gets so pumped. <laughs> and even though he's thinking coming, that arm just takes off or puts too much air up under the ball. And Jay had this big smile like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> Good little juice. They might come back to it here. Seems like the same formation. Third and six. Over the middle. You talked about the middle of the middle. Field. And I talked about how strong that guy was. was. He is an official rack boy for Grandma. <laughs> I tell you what, and that poor tackling, they're going to have to tighten that up. I know that's one thing the coaches on the, on the defense in the Holland right now. I know they say, hey, we got to tackle better. They're so worried about Anderson. you got two guys over the top on Anderson. 31 gets away from the middle of the football field where he's supposed to be. By the time he gets there, it's a little bit too late. Touchdown, Grandma. And Levi Washington, with his third touchdown reception on the season, gives Grambling a 12 to nothing lead. And would you go for two? You said they were only up six. I definitely would. Pick this up. But that's why we're in the booth. <laughs> no, it's not their coach. <laughs> well, Lawrence Richmond misses his second point after attempt of the football game. And with those two misses, will they loom large? We'll have to wait and see. Tigers lead. 
12 to nothing as we've got just 13 minutes left here in the first half. And Doug Williams is not only working his team, but he's working the officials and making sure they're on his side well, sure. as his club leads to 12 to nothing. Well, Doug knows better than everybody else out here. The 12 points is not going to be enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you look on that sideline, the defensive coordinator, Clifton Moore, he's talking to everybody. Get in your gaps. Stay where you need to be. And things can happen. But right here we're looking at Doug. Well, Nunley and Brown back deep to receive the kick. This is Nunley taking it at about the 17-yard line. And a 13-yard return for Jaque Nunley as you look at our scoring drive. 16 plays. Look at that. You can hold on to the football for eight minutes, boy. You're an awful happy football team. <laughs> and controlled the line of scrimmage the whole time. And look at that. Look at the possession. Look at the possession. 13 minutes to 13.56. And, and you can look at the family sideline down there and the defensive coordinator, Clifton Moore. He's giving the, he's sitting down with a chart, drawing where everybody should be in their gaps and make things happen. O.J. Martin spanks with the carry on first down and takes it out to about the 41. That'll be enough for a first down. March Banks, the JUCO transfer from California, averaging five yards per carry. Picks up 11 on that one. First and 10. Gray! And knocked down by George Gidry. Florida a &M's trying to pick up the tempo a little bit here. They're not going to a huddle. They're calling the players on the line of scrimmage, trying to get creative in ways of getting the football to their best player. But George Gittry, you know, he would line up at outside, inside. They would even put him at a little safety. So he's, he's a super player with a lot of athletic talent. Well, if you look at the linebackers of Grambling State, they're one, two, and three in tackles on this team. So you've got to beat those three to beat this team defensively. Quick pass to the outside to Isaac Brown. And Brown picks up about eight yards on the play. And that's what Quinn's got to do. He's got to take the underneath stuff. Bramlin's got a 12-point lead right now. They're not going to give it all back to you in two quick plays. They're going to make you drive the ball down the field. Take the underneath stuff, and the deep stuff will come later. He's had a lot of time to think about it because that last possession for Bramlin is eight minutes plus. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and two. Here comes pressure. Gray. Oh, they got a crease. He's got a crease. They got Marsh Banks. Marsh Banks at the 30. Marsh Banks inside the 20. And Marsh Banks takes it down to the 15-yard line. That is exactly what Doug Williams did not want to happen. You want to keep giving up the small plays and not give up the big plays. See here, nothing more than a simple little inside trap draw. And one thing about it, when you're blitzing, there's some gaps there. If you can get past the initial wave, there's going to be nobody in the secondary left to cover you. Smart guy. Tackle you. Smart guy covering up the ball. 36-yard pickup for March Banks. First and 10, and the Rattlers are knocking on the door, should I say, hissing in the backyard. Another inside handoff as they pick up a couple of yards, thanks to O.J., and they're calling him the juice now. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that was a nice hit by uh, Terrence Dukes, uh, the linebacker, uh, 6'2", 220 senior. 11-11. And Dukes has been a solid contributor to this defense the past two years. Great quarterback sneak and nothing doing. Robert Taylor says don't even try it. That's a guy that can play on Sundays. You're not going to fool him with a little quarterback draw. Hey, you know what? The G-men are Batman, baby. The G-men are Batman. And you look at Taylor. Taylor's a guy who academically had problems last year, didn't play, and yet didn't miss a beat. Got his grades together, came back this year, apologized to the team, and now he has been the leader of this defense. Character. Doug is glad to have him back, number 54. by Calvin Spears. Came up and just squared up and ran through him. You know, Calvin's getting ready to try to do something here at Grambling State that has never been done before, and that is be a first-team all-SWAC performer for four years. He was first-team as a freshman, he was first-team as a sophomore, and he's on course right now to becoming first-team all-SWAC as a junior. Who would have thought all the tradition to have down there that he would be the first one to be able to accomplish that? So Juan Vasquez 
on fourth down will attempt the field goal from 29 yards out. The kick is up and the kick is good. And now Juan Vasquez is 9 of 11 on the season in field goal attempts and makes. And with that, he cuts into that Tiger lead 12 to 3. We're here at the Circle City Classic in Indianapolis. More after this. So for Grambling State, looking to go to 5 and 1. They've got their hands full, but they also have the lead. And we also have Joe Claire, who's standing by on the sideline. Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what? when we do a game, all the BET celebrities show up. I got my man AJ. What's up? What's going on, Joe? You went to a black college. Uh, Howard University. And we uh, and we got free. What up, y'all? What up, Joe? You went to, uh, you from Boston. They, how many black people in Boston? There's a lot of black people in Boston. Not as many as here, but there's a lot. There's oh, all right. Well, they don't be letting us know that. So all the Boston people, big love to y'all. We're going to go back up to back up to y'all upstairs, man. I'm having a good time down here. Hey, Joe, tell my Howard buddy I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that rattler. Yeah. Making his way around. Hey, you know what? If you can get Joe to find a guy named Salvador for the fam, Big 74, I don't know where that guy's from, but big things can happen if we can ever get a picture of him. <laughs> 74 for Florida A&M. And, 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 and once you see him, you'll see why Big Nate is looking for Salvador. So here's Grambling State now going to get the football. On the return for Grambling is DJ Clay, who takes it out to about the 23-yard line. George, let me tell you something. It's getting very physical out there on the football field. Here's your scoring drive. Vasquez with that 29-yard field goal we talked about. But they got down the field a lot quicker than Grambling State's been getting down the field. 256. And there is Salvador for you. Oh, man, I'm glad. I know his mom and pop is glad he left home, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is 6'7", 400 pounds of football player, folks. You know what, fam? We got a meat scale in the back of the lunchroom. <laughs> and you know where they weigh my boy Big Salvador at. <laughs> they hang him high. So here comes Grambling State, and all of a sudden, picking up the pace is Jerron Daly. Big hey, players make big plays when you need them to. Realize his team is down by a little bit. Time's out on the side before the half. He's trying to pick up the tempo. Handoff went to Young, and Young lost three yards on that play. You talk about Daly. Daly is a candidate for the Buck Buchanan Award, which Big goes club. to the top defensive player in Division I AA. So after the loss, it's second down and long. Shotgun formation for Hines. He's got four receivers in the pattern. He loops one. To, oh, oh, what a block. Going and for oh, going deep down oh. the field. And the receiver was bumped. It was intended for Anderson, but he wouldn't have been able to catch that one, could he? Uh, uh, early, if we can go back to that early on Anderson's route, he came and did a little curl, but he seemed to still be limping. But when he saw his quarterback scrambling, I guess he forgot about he's supposed to be limping and took off deep for the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this block right here. Nice block. Wang. Boom. Good arm strength shown by the quarterback here. Questionable if there was some contact down there. He did bump. The cornerback did a pretty good job of riding him out of bounds. And once you go out there, unfortunately, you can't come back in and catch it. So now it looks like we've got a penalty because they're moving the flag, the sticks. A personal foul. Roughing the passer now being called against... Florida A&M, and boy, that's a, that's a big penalty. When you start seeing penalties like that, that means frustration is setting in. Somebody's pressure, trying to make something happen, but you got to be smart about it. You, I mean, you see the quarterback release the ball, just pull up. Young and Hogg. Quentin Hogg is one of the running backs in the backfield for Grambling State. And boy, those Rattlers starting to make some hits. That was, that was Alex Fortson on Michael Young. He came up and hit the gap. He filled it like a linebacker should. He's a great player, a young guy, playing in there with a lot of veterans, so he tried to make his presence felt. Just a sophomore from Just Miami. Just a sophomore. Clock still rolling as we are now under eight and a half minutes left here in the first half. 
Grambling State still in that shotgun on second down and eight. Look out. Good pressure by Daly. Hines got Look away out. from him. And the pass was intended for Quinton Hogg incomplete. Darnell Vick came up and made a nice little play. Just came up, batted the ball down, and it's over with. Vick received the benefit of Mr. Daly's hard work. Right here on this play right here, Daly comes with a fast rush. Hines uses after the ability to get away, tosses the ball out. Vic comes up and just bats it away. There you go. Don't celebrate. You know you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> but you know, I, I, it's very rare you see a Florida player and he doesn't do a little celebrate. That's that, that Deion factor. <laughs> that Deion Sanders factor. Third down conversion. Scrambling State is converted on five of six. They're facing a third down and eight. We'll see if they can make it six conversions right after this. It's third down and eight for Grambling State, who, as you can see, is a nine-point lead here at the Circle City Classic. George Johnson along with Nate Newton, Jay Walker, Joe Claire on the field with us. 17th annual Circle City Classic. And I mean, this is always a great football game. It doesn't matter who comes up here. You, you know, right right here, more importantly, I, I would like to know what the third down situation is. You got, you, you got, got the third down. Third, you got uh, it. Third, uh, a gremlin, what, five for six? A uh, fam, you three for six? And what we were talking about earlier is Doug had to, be, had to have a, a, a better ratio than they have, and they do. Let's see if he can make it six for seven. Daily again, but Himes got it all and found his receiver, and Anderson made the catch. And a nice play by a senior to make the catch, collect himself, and then get out of bounds. Definitely was a great play there. Good concentration. This defensive back had a good opportunity for an interception. Anderson showed great hand-eye coordination by keeping his eye on the football, not just assuming that the, that the defensive back was going to tip the ball. Ball's coming up in the air. DB falls down. He concentrates, stays inbound. Scoots out, scoots out of bounds a little bit too fast for my taste. Jerron Daly had a lot of pressure there, too. But how about Himes' ability under the pressure to stay calm? Right. He has shown a toughness that Doug Williams talked about. Inside handoff for Grambling. This time they go to Joe Christopher. And, folks, we're going to mention a whole lot of folks coming out of the backfield for Grambling State. We've already seen Michael Young. We've already seen Rodney Boudouin. Quinton Hogg they tried to pass to. That was Joe Christopher. And we still haven't seen the leading rusher from last year, right here, Trey we, White. We just give a quick handoff underneath. He runs up another three or four yards and met by Andre Brooks. He came up and made a, a solid tackle because he was like he was finna go to distance. <laughs> Christopher picking up three on that one. Second and seven for the G-Man. Christopher again. And boy, look at those Rattlers closed down that area. And a flag comes flying in. That probably holding. holding. <laughs> Once again, Jerron Daly is is all over the place. I mean, he's playing, he's guess, he's playing a guessing game with their offensive coordinator, and he's jumping all over the place. George, you're laughing. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> Just the way you said, yeah, it's old, you know, <laughs> as, if, as an offensive line. <laughs> you know, and, and, as I, and I know right now, I, I know right now that uh, Coach Hayes is saying, Come on, fellas. Get Just keep your feet. Suck it down. As I'm saying earlier, I know Coach Hayes is saying, keep your feet, because they're not going to call holding a lot. But if you fall out and you tug a guy's jersey and the ref see, they're going to throw it. <laughs> they, fellas. What causes a lineman to hold? On a uh, bad I've feet. Been curious. Feet get out of place. Feet get out of place. Can't keep up. <laughs> Can't keep up. <laughs> Second down now, and make it 16. Inside screen. And here's Anderson. And boy, Anderson has some really nice moves. And he's so thin that you just feel as if if somebody hits him really hard. <laughs> but that they went to his advantage. They say he weighs 185 pounds. But you don't look like you I said, they that. say he weighs 185 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> 185 they look like pounds on game day. <laughs> with your pads and helmet on. I don't know if I can say it. They look like a young Ethiopian. <laughs> <laughs> And yet this guy right here has set the school record with 142 career receptions. 
as he passed Tremaine Johnson in a game against Alabama A&M where he had 12 receptions for 129 yards this year. Third down and Don't seven. Fall. Going long. And he had a receiver who had gotten behind the defense. That's Chris Highshaw. And the pass was just too long. Yeah, I know he wishes he could take that one back. Highshaw is a seven-foot high jumper for the Grambling G-Man. Hang it up there. You can afford to underthrow a guy like that. He can go and make that play for you if you give him a chance. If he's jumping seven feet up in the air. He's probably not running that fast here on the ground. Took a lick there. You know what? Definitely this offensive line has been doing a nice job. Frank Livingston, Terry Riley, Larry Big Mac. Uh, Kelvin Thomas and William Jackson, they've done a nice job protecting Randy Hines back there and giving them holes for a Roger Boudreau to run into. Isaac Brown is back deep to receive the punt by Lawrence Richmond. And I let this one just bounce, but we got a flag back there at the 39-yard line, and I'm wondering if that's roughing the punter. If it is. What a bonehead play if it was. They did bring some pressure on the kicker. You didn't say bonehead, did you? I said bonehead. Bonehead. It's against the Rattlers. Because that's definitely what that was about. <laughs> and I wonder if we can get a shot of Billy Joe, what he looks like right now, huh? Look at the punter. Yes. Good acting. But that's what not, that was unintentional. That was not intentional. To... Well, if that's the case, would it be a five-yard penalty? as opposed to a 15, and if it's just five, you don't get the first down, as you see, Billy Joe. It's a oh, 15-yard penalty. That's unfortunate. I, I don't necessarily agree with that one there. I don't think that was a 15-yard. It looked like unintentional contact. That could be very costly, very costly. Going into the half, five minutes left in the second quarter. Your team's about to get the ball back. You put together a good drive, go into the halftime down by two points. Now Grambling should probably get at least three points out of this. And the worst probably thing, is a big problem, though. They haven't been making kicks today. And Keep the worst, go ahead. The worst thing about it is you push your defense right back out on the field. Now they've done a super job to get off. And the way they've been holding on to the football, let's see if they keep it on the ground now and try to take some time off this clock. Anderson in motion, inside handoff. That's exactly what they do as they go to the workhorse inside, Rodney Boudouin, and he picks up close to 10 yards. Are you coaching now, George? That was a great break call. <laughs> oh, man, me, being the quarter, me being the quarterback, I'm thinking pass all the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figure, you know, like right you here, said. Right here, he pulls the guard. He goes straight up the middle. That's supposed to be a trap, but when the guard pulled to the left, he just went straight up in the open hole, so that means Florida a and is not filling the gap. Second and one. Don't be surprised if they take a shot at the end zone here and then come back and assume they can pick up the first down on third down and one if they need to. Well, Young is the sole setback as they have three receivers split to the left, although Levi Washington goes in motion, and they tried to give it inside, and the Rattlers weren't fooled whatsoever. Credit defensively Anthony Cola with coming up and making that first initial impact. Some Parsons gave him some help to get to the pile as well. Sometimes you come up and you just uh, run right into a blitz. But here they was going away from the blitz, but the speed got them. Just one too many men for them to block. Another play by Andre Brooks. You got to realize the fam was willing to do all this blitzing down here in the red zone. They must be a little concerned. You only blitz to create some havoc. Right. They hide something. That means they don't, they don't have real big defensive line. Third down and four. Clock's still Blitz. rolling. Four and a half left. Himes gets away. Himes will touch pass. And boy, you got to make that catch right there, sir. Intended for Highshaw. And that was catchable. Yes, it was. Quarterback did a great job. They brought another blitz for him. They're bringing a lot of blitzes from the outside, bringing outside linebackers. Their job is to make the quarterback stay in the pocket, but he's such a good athlete. Look at the spin right, right here. here. Breaks contain. Settles, squares his shoulders up, throws the ball right on the money. Between the eight and the three, which one was it? I, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I tell you like this. We would like to be a little more specific, specific on whether it's a DB, a uh, linebacker, but these guys are... Uh, Got on different numbers, wild numbers. You don't know who's covering who sometimes. Gentlemen, fourth down and four, and they're going to go for it. Good play. They got two guys wide open. Oh, and it's tipped. Great play by the defensive back coming in there on the blitz cola. And Jeremy Banks looked like he got the big paws on it. There were two or guys. Or was that wide Parsons? Open. Either way, that's some big paws. <laughs> <laughs> 
there were two guys wide open here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from this angle here. Two receivers sitting wide open in the same spot right behind them. You see the guy there behind them, and where the tip ball is going, there's another guy there as well. Great play by the Florida a defense. More importantly, they didn't allow Ramblin to score. So with 420 left here in the first half, and the Rattlers trailing, they get the football. And Gray immediately going downfield, finds his receiver, and a good catch and run there by T.J. Hines. Good time, good protection. Gray squared up, read the defense, set his feet, and threw a pass right on the money. And more importantly, it gave him a little confidence. 33-yard pickup. Clock still running as soon as they blow the whistle. 4-10 and counting here in the first half. Way to find the seam, right down the seam. Again, two receivers split to either side for Gray. For lobbing it. And the pass was intended for Isaac Brown or was it intended for Joe Clegg? <laughs> Because he was the closest one to that football. Right there, like they had a little misread right there. I mean, the quarterback was going deep, but the receiver, like he was still coming out of his break or uh, uh, double move of some sort. Second down and 10. Is this a no huddle now, gentlemen? Definitely. Do you have to rush, though, if the clock stops, is my question. You can take your time. The clock's not rolling. They're just trying to find a rhythm. Okay. Gray, inside, passes caught. More or less, I don't think the uh, Florida a and offense wants to allow the Grambling defense to make any switches of personnel. They got them on the go, defensive line, they're sucking wind a little bit, but they're a little tired. They don't really rush the pass for that well. They've been known to take the play off or two. Isaac Brown with a 13-yard catch right there. Another first down for the Rattlers. They trail by nine. They're inside the 25-yard line. Gray's back there by himself. Good protection. Pass was too high, intended for Isaac Brown. You notice now only rushing three with two linebackers. They're trying to keep everything underneath in this prevent defense. But sometimes when I was playing ball, I hated prevent. Prevent only prevented you from scoring real quick. Because eventually you will get either three or six. And they still continue to come back to the line of scrimmage with no huddle. Second down and ten after the incompletion. Gray. In the end zone. No, no. Intercepted. And we talked about this young man, Calvin Spears. Spears makes the interception, but more importantly, how about Gray throwing his second interception after having none the first five ball games? Three. So 324 left here in the first half. Gray throws this interception with the Rattlers threatening, and they'll remain behind by nine. We'll have more here on BET after this. RCA Dome, George Johnson, along with Jay Walker and Nate Newton and Joe Flair, scrambling right, state bro, after a turnover and interception by Calvin Spears to the five-yard line, and they hand it off to Michael Young, first and ten, and he picks up five yards on the carry. And Doug is back at it again, mixing plays real well, making things happen, switching in and out the backs, but he's still running behind that big center, Larry Big Mac. And there's no need to rush now for them because with the clock continuing to roll and them up by nine, under three minutes left. Right here, you have to be real careful. No turnovers. Just run the clock out. If something big, you have to take it, but don't rush. Here's Young again. And as long as Young continues to pick up three, four, five yards every time he gets the football, they'll be okay. Tackle made by Alex Fortson on that. And here we make a lot about the floor name them having a very large line. This Grambling State line averages 299 pounds across the board. It's not the 310 pounds that floor name them has, but 299, I don't know, Nate, you may not be able to break that line. Yeah, maybe not, but it's more importantly, Grambling standing the third and two, the third and three, the third and one, and they're making these plays, and this is what keeps giving them the time of possession at this point. Makeable third down is what we call it. Third down and one. Look at that full house backfield. Taking Nate back to his early days. <laughs> they get the first down on that play. And defense really has been the key for Grambling State. We show you our AutoZone Take Charge play of the game, and it belongs to the defensive back for Calvin Grambling, Spears. Calvin Spears. Definitely a take, take charge play of the game because you had a chance where Florida A&M offense was starting to find its rhythm, had a good opportunity to go down in the halftown, down by two. 
Instead, they're down by nine still. He's well on his way to another fourth swag. <laughs> <laughs> Player of the week. Yeah. Today's Take Charge play has been brought to you by AutoZone. The more than 2,800 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts and auto parts. We're going to let him get the third one before he okay. gets that fourth one. <laughs> yeah. He's just a junior, but boy, is he a player, man. Oh, he, he definitely is. They missed the first down. So they didn't get it. Good defense. Fourth down, and they're going to punt again. And the last time they were in this situation, Florida A&M got a little over aggressive and roughed up the punter and gave the football back. As you get a good look at Isaac Brown, the return man, the junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But Florida A&M is still in good field position. All they need is about a five or ten yard return, get the ball set, and start the offense up again. I mean, uh. Quinn got to find his rhythm. He's got to get his confidence back because going into halftime, the guys are going to start looking around like, what's going on? So punting the football. And Joe and, and, and Doug talked about his punting game. As a team, they're averaging just 26 yards per punt. Although this guy right here, Lawrence Richmond, has done a little better. 34 yards per punt. As this one bounce out, bounces out of bounds and about midfield. Let's go down to the field and Joe Claire. All right, down here on the field, the atmosphere is wonderful because the Grambling people are like, it's whatever. We don't care about the Heisman Trophy. We don't care about who's the best or whatever. We came to win today. And so they off the hook out here. I got my man Lil Zane out here in the crowd. It's a lot of celebrities and everything. I'm going to go back up to y'all. I'm about to go find if I can give me some free dimes or something from one of these little... <laughs> <laughs> bling, bling. Hey, hey, look at here. This is what it's about. Halftime getting close. The band's starting to tune up. The ladies starting to step high. <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad. It's my first time. Yeah, flashbacks. Yeah, you? because you we used to ask the coach at halftime if we up, can we watch? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Raptors... Oh, no. And almost intercepted again. That time, Byron Addison had a hand on the ball. It was intended for Brown. And you got to wonder, what do they see? Why are they going to Isaac so much, Jay, that they're not going back to Jacque Nunley? Well, they're trying to take Jacque out of the equation. By doing that, Jacque is always going to have somebody over his head and somebody 10 yards away from him as well following him. What the quarterback's got to do is go to your alternate, alternate receivers. Jacque is going to get his catch sooner or later. He's had the patience to get by him. The other guys will be open. Second down and 10, and they go back to Brown again. And I'm telling you, that's got to be about the fifth, sixth ball they've thrown in a row. But you got to understand, Brown is a fast guy. He's about, about a 4-3, 4-4 guy. And they may hope that he can break a tackle and get down the sideline. But remember this name, Joe Jackson. It may ring a bell in the second half if things don't happen for Greg. You're talking about the second-string quarterback for Florida a and You're already making decisions for Billy Joe. You got the same seat he has. Third down. About five yards to go. Gray over the middle and dropped wow. by Chuck Quay Nunley. One of the things that Quinn has to be careful of is realize that was a good read, good pass. You can't throw it and catch it. Right. If you notice, every time he throws the ball less than five yards, it's wide open. They're giving up every pass that he wants under five yards. He's getting himself in trouble when he's going for the passes 10 yards plus, trying to stick a curl route, trying to stick a seam route, or a kernel route, or throwing the ball late down the middle. So throwing it to coverage is what's killing him. He's not taking what the defense is giving him. Exactly. Nunley with three catches in the ball game, dropped that one, so it's fourth down. And Florida A&M is again forced to punt the football, and Doug put nobody back there to receive it, so they could have dropped that thing inside the five, ten yard line. Makes Doug look like a genius. Keep in mind, coming up at halftime, it'll be our Southwest Airlines halftime report, as we'll recap. What went, went on, what went on, easy for me to say, what went on in the first half? I guess I could get, you know, Jay and old Big Newt to do that right now. <laughs> they been all crambling, <laughs> running, throwing, and catching, and hitting, and tackling, and making things happen. Following a 26-yard punt, Grambling State now with the football. Just shy of the 20-yard line with a minute 28 left here in the first half. And we keep saying it. I think they're going to be content again with the ball in the hand of their deep back. This time they give it though to the fall back. And you love when big boys come out of that hole. Picking up big yards like that. That again was Mr. Rodney Boudouin. And you got to love the blow he delivered at the end of that run. 
those, those defensive backs, those safeties, they weigh 180 pounds. They don't like tackling those 220, 225 pound guys. Hey, he's going to lay the boom on you. He's not going down easily. You're not tackling a wide receiver. And that right side of the line is doing a super job of giving them wide open holes. And they're just punishing Florida and their defense. And I love that Creole name from Louisiana Boudoir. Inside Boudoir again. On, on. And this time, nothing doing says Cola. Hey, they stack him up there like a boudin <laughs> sausage. <laughs> This is what happens when you go to the hole one too many times. Your first time, shame on us. Second time, shame on you. Mr. Cola makes Mr. Boudin play. That's right. Ron Daly on the play. Uh, John Battle on the play. These guys are trying to, defense is trying to stay in there, trying to stay intense. But as time goes on, the offensive line will wear these guys now because, as we said before, they, they don't have a big uh, deep, uh, off defensive line in, in Florida and They're just small guys, quick guys, guys that are explosive, but they need their speed to make a punch. If they got to come off blocks all day, it weakens them. It takes their legs away. No legs, no strength. Unbelievable that the Rattlers of Florida A&M have just three points when this is a club that came in averaging 48 per game. I mean, this is a team that has scored in bunches many times. In fact, most games throughout the year, right. come this time of the football game, it was pretty much decided. Right. Especially coming off their performance last week. They were winning 33 nothing at halftime. And I think they come back and put up three points and a half as a shock to us all. But well, we talked to Doug, Doug yesterday in the walkthrough, and, uh, you know, Gramlin had a bad defeat to Louisville. Uh, they didn't score any points. I think they got 40 to nothing or whatever. And... Their, their fellas, their guys took something from them. I mean, when you play a Division One team like that that brings the hammer, then you come back to your own division, it's kind of hard for people to face you. So Grambling State has been rolling this year. They're undefeated in conference playing the SWAC. This is a non-conference game, and they're looking good here. Another inside handoff to Boudouin as Daly is there initially, and then got a lot of help from other Rattler players. Beverly on the tackle, as well as Cola. But right there, they're, they're trying to bang it out. They're trying to be safe. Uh, they're trying to run out the clock, doing a good job. It's third and long, but who cares? I mean, it's only 30, 30 seconds or less going on on the game clock. It's about over for this half. Third and seven. And, and for the and called a timeout before that last play. You're wondering what they were thinking. Were they trying to make a stop maybe before the first half or just collecting their thoughts. Possibly just realize don't give up anything big before the half. We'll come out, we'll give them the second half. We get the ball back. Now, it's really not that important to us. But, you know, Florida and them attitude is, hey, we don't need but a second to score. And maybe they <laughs> saying to themselves, if we can just get this ball back and go deep, something may can happen. On one play, either it's just turn out to be a long punt if it's an interception. And so we've come to the end of the first half, and it has pretty much been all grambling state. Doug Williams and his Tigers, who came in 4-1 and one on the season, taking on the mighty Florida a and Rattlers, who were 5-0 and oh and ranked number one in black college football. But the Tigers have been unfazed and go into the locker room with a nine-point lead, 12-3. to three. We'll have more coming your way from Indianapolis, Indiana, here on BET, right after this. They are rocking and rolling. And look at that little step in Grambling State. I'd be stepping high, too, if I had the lead on the number one team in black college football. Welcome back to the RCA Dome. I'm George Johnson, where Grambling State has been in control in this football game. But we take time out now, get away from the gridiron stuff, and talk about the pageantry that is the Circle City Classic. Joining me right now is the man, the president, who gets this thing going, who makes this happen, has been making it happen for 17 years, and that's Charles Williams. Good to have you with us. Thank you, George, for having me. It's, it's been great. For 17 years, nobody would believe in a Midwest city like Indianapolis that you could have a black college game that could sell out 58,000 people. It's been a blessing. But the great thing about it, it's not about a football game, it's the event. And more importantly, this event generates over $20 million in economic impact. And that's something when you talk about what you represent in a city or state and the spending powers of African-American people. Isn't it unbelievable how when you can make some money, people have no problem when you bring events into a city <laughs> and pack the city up? Yeah, the only, the only sad part about it, we don't own enough downtown. We don't own any restaurants, we don't own any hotels, we don't own a convention center. So uh, a lot of people benefit 
but a lot more African Americans need to benefit. But the more that we can do these things, George, the better off we can get more people involved and say, look, I want to buy a restaurant or a hotel down here in Indianapolis. When you look back 17 years and you think about the, the, the struggles you had early on and then you look back at it, what did you learn in terms of putting this thing together to make it successful? Well, George, I never really had a doubt about it being a success. I think the skeptics who felt like this is Midwest. The closest historical black college was either Kentucky State or Central State University. And so they said, well, how is a city like Indianapolis and in the Midwest could do that? I believe because God put it in our hearts that we could do it, and we've done it for 17 years. And more importantly, the fact that we lift up black colleges. Right now, they're going through a lot of struggles, and we all need, if you're alumni or if you're not alumni, we need to keep historical black colleges moving on. Thank you very much for your time, Charles Lord, Williams, thank you for having who has made this thing happen each and every year. And we love being here, and we'll be here years to come. As always. We go to commercial break as we go. Take a look at that Tigers marching band as they wind me up. If you see some meal, that's woke. When it comes to ground and state, you know that's woke. So we gonna break it down a little something like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At our first half highlights, and there was a whole lot of action. We start with you, Nate, because when you think about it, you cannot turn the football over, and that's exactly what Florida A&M did early on to get them, or at least to get Grambling State going. Right there at the beginning of the game, their first drive, uh, O.J. Marshbanks fumbled the ball. All he had to do was cover up, and better still than that, he could have just fell outside. And, and the key thing here is that Grambling capitalized on the turnover. Here's Mr. Smooth, Mr. Anderson, hits him hard where it hurts. 98-yard touchdown reception. By a costly turnover by the quarterback from Florida a and m And then after that turnover, you go back to the receiver. This time it's Levi. Going right across the middle, breaking the tackle, and going in for a touchdown. And then, of course, when you talk about turnovers, you don't talk about Florida a and m But here, another interception. Something we're not used to saying. Quinn throws an interception. Quinn throws an interception. We haven't said it all year long, but... Unfortunately, in this game, in a big game, he's thrown two costly interceptions. And prior to that, hadn't thrown an interception all year long. That's why Florida A&M trails in this one. They're wrapping things up here from the RCA Dome at halftime. We'll have the second half play coming your way here on BET right after this. by Southwest Airlines. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. A symbol of freedom. Love you, get time. George Johnson along with Jay Walker and Nate Newton. Joe Claire is on the sidelines as we're about to begin the second half and you get a good look at Florida a ms sideline as they trail in this one. 12 to three, they came in undefeated at five and zero. Oh. But how about Grambling State? They have been absolutely outstanding. Nothing fancy, just getting the job done. That's why they lead in this one. Different, so now, go ahead, Nate. Different formation, different sets, running the ball effectively, hurting uh, fans' little defense. William Lloyd is back deep to receive the kick, as is Williams. And Lloyd takes it up the gut to about the 25-yard line. Let's take a look now at the first half numbers brought to you by Southwest Airlines. And you can see first downs belong in the Grambling State. Passing yards, they seem to have dominated in this one. Key stat that's missing from that screen, turnovers. Big right. game, Florida a &M has turned the ball over three times. Statistics show, you turn the ball over that many times, you're going to lose a football game. And Nate, how about that possession? Time of possession. That shows you that Gramlin is running the ball. We need their first downs, rushing first downs, would be nice to see, too. And welcome back to the RCA Dome, where Nate says we. Inside <laughs> hand off to the fullback, and we know who he's going with. That wasn't too hard to figure out. I I know. I'm, one <laughs> I'm not going. Hey, I'm in the booth. I'm doing my job. And if I slip because of a you know, little passion there, y'all excuse me. I see that T-shirt. You got a green. Yeah. And, and orange t yeah, and all I'm sweating green and orange right about <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we is losing the football game. <laughs> hey, let's keep playing. Big Mac coming out of the center, coming out to center. Yes, he has done a good job. Line. You're right. Second down and eight. He's been talking about Larry Mativo all game long, folks. He's the 
center for Grambling State and has been clearing up some holes inside. But Himes throws it over the middle, and the pass was too high. Forced the ball there in the covers a little bit. Pass was intended for his tight end, Jesse. They seem to be looking for the tight ends, and Doug told us that he was going to try some formations, get those tight ends involved. Yeah, typically when you look at the Grambling offense, you're so focused on Anderson and Washington that you forget about the tight ends they have there. And, you know, so far this season, the tight ends have pretty much been a non-factor, catching combined around seven balls for the whole year. Tight ends have hurt him a little bit. Tight end can get to the middle of the defense quicker than anybody else. Himes was effective first half, 9 of 14 for 200 yards. You complete 9 of 14 passes. That's not bad. That stuff. Mimes again. Good protection. No, no. Oh! And that one was almost picked off. And Troy that's Hart. Troy Hart. He has come up with some big plays all year long. He took one to the house for almost 100 yards last week. I mean, the guy's a ball player. He's a ball hawker. He didn't need 100 yards here. All he needed was a 30 yard interception return for a touchdown. Ball's on its way. Right in his hands. Overran the ball. Maybe running before he caught the football. Good coverage here. He comes out of the break a little bit quicker than the wide receiver does. Ball's thrown late. In and out. It's one of those ones where you just say, boom, oh, down. And the Rattlers have been able to pick up those interceptions. They forced 12 interceptions this year. So that's a little surprising as Isaac Brown is your deep man now for Florida A&M. Punting the football will be Lawrence Richmond. Two punts last in the first half. He averaged 33 yards a punt. Sorry, dude. So Florida came out and did what they wanted to do. They wanted to stop them on this first drive and try to get their own rhythm into this game. Solid punt. Brown fields it at the 37-yard line where the Rattlers of Florida A&M will take over first and 10. They trail by nine. We're just underway here in the second half. Let's see if the Rattlers can mount a charge. Spirit at halftime, the fans from Grambling settling in. A lot to smile and, about. And you know the funny thing about it? They show a lot of these Grambling fans coming back early. But you know the fam fans, they still in the restroom getting drinks. <laughs> They're a little bit upset right now. <laughs> See, that's a fam fan right there. See, <laughs> no <laughs> smile. <laughs> she mad. She got a big gold chain. Look at the partner. Got his big gold chain on. He flossing. <laughs> First and 10 balls at the 38-yard line for Florida a and &M. Well, they can change that floss a little bit if they get that football in the end zone. But they've got to move against a Grambling State defense that did a pretty good job against them in the first half. And how about that play right there? Good defensive play by Denmark Reed, who had an interception in the first half as well. Yeah. And they, they tricked the quarterback into calling an audible here. They faked the blitz, made the quarterback call an audible. Anytime quarterback audibles, he's going to do something quick, anticipated that. Boom. Basically a no-brainer. No T.J. Hines with the catch right there. Gray completed just 9 of 22 passes in the first half. This time they run the ball inside. Yeah, they hit up the middle between uh, left guard Terry Riley. Oh, wrong team. Sorry. <laughs> that was O.J. Marchblanks with yeah. the carry, though. Behind Derek, uh, Derek Gray. <laughs> and Sherry turned. And they like to change that offensive line a little bit. They'll play guards and tackles, won't they? And the key, fam, you have to stick with the game plan. I mean, they've got an offensive line that weighs 310 pounds across the board. Lean on them a little bit. Score one touchdown at a time. Don't try and get it all back, relying upon the pass every single time. Your offensive line is bigger than their D-line. And Graham was rushing three. O.J. March Blanks with the carry. Picked up two yards and a first down in the process. So now the ball's at midfield. <laughs> Still no huddles. Inside handoff to Mark Blanks again. That time there, the Grambling defense came up like they was going to blitz, but they were in a 3-4 defense. We're going away from their 4-3 de defense, just getting a different look. But fam, you caught him right up the middle with a nice run. How about Mark Hall getting back and making that tackle right there? He's a defensive end. Also on the tackle is Denmark Reed. Second down and five. They're going to just keep on giving it to Mr. O.J. That's what they need to do. Lean on them a little bit. You got the big line. They haven't set up any type of running game. And being a former quarterback, I know it's a whole lot easier to throw the football when you have a good running game behind you. It's because Grambling is trolling them with a seven-man front. What they're trying to do is to get them to bring the eighth man up so that way your golf co coach offense is coming to true effect with the, with the rank balls. Third and three, first time we've seen an option-type play. And the Raptors pick up the first down. Good feel by the safety, Marlon Williams there. He wasn't fooled. He came up, saw the pitch, and attacked the ball. Williams, a junior, 
who led all defensive backs in tackles last year. As you see Lonnie Walker hobbling off the field. Right now, I think Jimmy, uh, Jimmy uh, Joe, the uh, offensive coordinator, is just trying to settle these guys down and get into some type of rhythm. This time they fake the inside handoff, go to Nunley, and Nunley may pick up two yards with that catch. He probably didn't pick up two. Nunley, they got to realize Nunley's got a guy right underneath him and a guy right behind him. Coach Joe and the staff have to figure out a way to use these other players. I know Nunley's your main guy, but every now and then, you know, Nunley's a great player, but it's pretty hard to beat two on one coverage. Definitely. Nunley had three receptions in the first half, so that's four for the ball game for him. As we sit in the first half, looking to pass Jerry Rice as the all-time leading receiver in college football history. Inside handoff goes to Marge Blanks, who picks up another couple of yards. And coming in, Jaquay Nunley, number 85, he needed 38 receptions to pass Jerry Rice. 301 career receptions. You talked to him yesterday, right. Nate, and you asked him, did he really understand what he was doing in terms of passing the immortal Rice? And he said, I, I, you know, I, I feel good about it, but I don't think about it because I want to stay within the team concept. I don't lose focus. Well, now his team is moving the football downfield. Another complete pass, this time to T.J. Hines. And Hines makes the catch for a first down yardage. I like the call there. I like the call. You fake a little run, thinking it's third and short, getting you close. This is four down territory, meaning they're probably going to go for it if it's fourth and two or three. Just trying to pick up a couple yards here. They got a big pop down the field. Good throw, good catch, get out of bounds. And again, Denmark Reed actively knocking the receiver out of bounds after a 16-yard pickup. We have another uh, whistle here. We don't see any flags on the field. We don't know what the problem is, but believe me, they're meeting in a huddle right now, and we will know because <laughs> they're the zebras. We'll have the last word. Scary crew to you sometimes, isn't he? Definitely. Especially when they get in those little huddles. And you know you were the one that jumped first? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in my playing career, I didn't jump a lot. You didn't jump a lot. <laughs> my problem was holding. <laughs> you know, towards the end of the game, we win. And I'm talking about when I was at fan, we'd be beating up on Howard University. Oh, no, I don't. And we'd be winning. And, <laughs> you know, I start thinking about them hot dogs, you know. <laughs> I start thinking about them hot dogs and kind of go to reaching out and be a man, you well, know. <laughs> but we just you know, figured out how you beat Howard. You just said you were holding all the time. 25 seconds, no play. No play. That, 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 that sword that you just stabbed us with reached all the way down to the television truck, and even our producer, Chris Grain, felt that way. Another Howard graduate. <laughs> so no play. We got first and ten. Ball's on the 20. And the Rattlers have been moving the football downfield thanks to this guy right here, O.J. Marquez, who's inside the 10 and down to the four-yard line. And they decided on this drive, let's give the football to this young man right here and get the football in the end zone. He's done a good job of just leaning on him. Right here on, the, big on this play right here, it's just a basic handoff up the middle. And he just, he just took off with it, broke to the outside. Good running, good smart running. Covers the ball up right there to tackle. March Blanks comes in averaging 57 yards per game, but right now he's rushed for 83. So he's getting it done, folks, on 13 carries. We'll see if they can get in the end zone after this. Uh, Quinn just turns around and hands the ball to, to, to O.J. Marshbanks right behind Derrick Gray, Gray and Terry Logan. And he takes it up the middle to the outside, out sprints a few Grambling guys, turns it up, makes a great play. I don't know, Jay, but it, it just amazes me how linemen, that's all they focus in on is that <laughs> offensive line. You see Nate dropping down everybody who made the play. Guy runs 15 yards. He goes, credit the old line. That's all old line. He was. I mean, big, 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 <laughs> tremendous hole. <laughs> and O.J. Marchblanks is taking advantage of it. Make no mistake about it. Like I said, 83 yards carrying in this football game. We still got a lot of time to go. Watch out for Nunley here. Watch out for Nunley. Look at those two receivers down there way down at the bottom of your screen all by themselves. And this time, Gray keeps it. And Gray is not easy to bring down. And with that, goes in for a seventh run rushing touchdown of the season. Tricked them by formation, spread them out, had four wide receivers, all of them lined up no closer than 15 yards to the ball. Simple dive option here. Quarterback has, has the choice. You can either run the ball Center or pitch mode. it. Center out. mode. That hurts. Derek Gray on their man, driving them into the end zone. The, the key is when you get down that close to the end zone, your job is to, as an offensive lineman is to score with your man, and these guys did just that. And that out you heard was from Jay Walker, who 
saw another quarterback get poked in the eye as he was making his way across. That should be a penalty flag. Or something. <laughs> Inside, is that what yeah, don't touch the Forget quarterback from the pass. Isn't it? Juan Vasquez, who has been absolutely solid with the point after, unlike on the other side, connecting on 27 of 28 after that. And Quinn Gray goes in from four yards out to cut that Grambling State lead to two. A&M on the board with their first touchdown of the game and now trailed by just two to Grambling State. And let's go down to the field to Joe Clay. Hey, check this out. I mean, everybody. This is my man, Chris Huffins. Chris, y'all see that? That's bling bling. That is bling bling. Sydney 2000. Where'd you, what'd you win, Chris? Bronze medal, 2000 Olympics. And what event? Decathlon. He, this is the Decathlon League. Bronze medal, where you from? Brooklyn, New York. From Brooklyn. Represent Brooklyn. High school in Indianapolis. Oh, but he went to high school here. And we're going to send it back to y'all. I'm going to see if he can let me wear his medal for a minute and, and run around the stadium. Yeah, sure. Right, John. Yeah, go ahead. Can we keep the camera on as you try to take that medal from me? I think Joe found the best athlete in the whole building. And that's yeah. something else. For the bronze medal in the Sydney Games, that's Mr. Off. Huffman. That's off to a brother. The captain lead. <laughs> and that is not, <laughs> that is something new. <laughs> Rayford Johnson. No, you can't shortchange Rayford Johnson like yeah, that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Absolutely. That's that is sweet, a beautiful yeah. thing right there. I'm jealous. Don't jack him, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> 11 play drive from Florida AM and it took him just three and a half minutes to get it done. And Gambling State's coming. Bow! Oh! And a fumble off the ball. Oh! What a hit. You can hear it from up here in the booth. Wow. Well, the return was by Derek Wallace. And boy, he took a shot. <laughs> he took a hit. <laughs> Let's go back over this and find out who gave the hit. Right here. He's got good wall blocking. He gets past the first way. Outruns number 90. Turns it up. Boom. And once again, it's the big play man, number nine. We Troy talked Hart. about Troy Hart. <laughs> Listen to that in, in up and close and fast speed, that is. That's beautiful. Beautiful football. So here comes Grambling State and Mr. Michael Young. And Young in the first half didn't rush for a lot of yards, but was very consistent, kept the ball in the middle of the field, kept the clock going, had just 29 yards in the first half, but carried that one for close to for 10. Just moving the chains. That's all they're doing, just moving the chains. That was a nice run behind the Big Mac, the center again. I mean, I don't want to talk about this guy too much. There's other guys on this line that's doing super jobs. You know, Terry Riley, Frank Livingston is holding down Jerome Daly. Uh, Kevin Thomas is doing a nice job. And William Jackson. You said Teddy Riley? Nah. -uh. Not Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Terry Okay, Riley. here comes Young again. <laughs> I like the way Young is running the ball. Man. Young is running like, he ain't going to hit me like that. <laughs> but again, learner. another first down run and nothing great, nothing extravagant, nothing special, just solid running. Doug said, hey, we got a rhythm here going. We got a chemistry. We're mixing it up well. Let's don't panic. Let's don't feel like we got to go up by six. Let's just keep eating up the clock and run the ball and kick another field goal. Darnell Vickers makes the play. And you talk about field goals. They're up by two. They've missed two extra points. That could be very oh, big. That's scary. I'm going to take that field goal thing back. <laughs> Maybe that's why they won't be yeah. not thinking about a field goal. Yeah. Doug might look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> a field goal, did you see the first half? Uh, it's, a Billy, it's a Billy Joe watch right about now. Is he still up in the booth with us? Is, uh, <laughs> is he taking to the field yet? Boudouin with the carry. And Pat Burroughs makes the tackle. And there's Joe. He's, he, he's hanging tough. He believes in his system. He believes the way he's doing things is the right way. Right. Most winners coaches stay that way. So after a two-yard pickup by the fullback, it's second down and eight. Washington wide open. A wide open receiver in Levi Washington, and Washington picks up close to 13 yards on the play. This quarterback is doing a fantastic job. Before the ball was even snapped, I knew he had to go to Washington. What he's doing, grambling, Doug Williams is motioning away from Anderson, so the quarterback's getting an easy read. If they keep two people over there on the Anderson side, he's double covered all by himself. What this does is it opens up a clear passing lane. Look at 28. Nobody's covering him. This is called formation passing. They're just beating him, not by the athletic ability, but just by using their mental psyche up top. 
and plus the offensive line is doing picking up that man, leaving the extra man for the quarterback to make his read. So here we go on first and ten. Inside handoff. And boy, they're starting to get a little physical out there. Burroughs making the play on Boudouin. And we talked about Boudouin, 5'8", 220-pound bowling ball. Just wide everywhere. <laughs> but this guy right here, Pat Burroughs, also pretty pretty much of a stud at 5'11", 232. And what you got to give credit to the grabbing offensive line for, and I know Big Nate always likes talking about that center. We have not called out Mr. Daly's name a whole lot lately. No. Hey, hey, Frank, Frank, Lewis, Lewis, Frank Lewis, Lewis is living up to his name, I guess. He's talking about Jerron Daly, who was considered the best defender, or one of the best defenders. Dangerous in the pass. Oh! And the catch was made by Washington. A catch. And Vickers came up and lowered the boom. And that's, I think that's the second, third time we've seen Vickers coming up with a big shot on a receiver. What a catch. Cole is out there in the flat and just lays the boom. We have sound on this one. This may be louder than the last one, man. Right. But, you know, this is a third and five or more. Let's, uh, let's see what Doug is thinking. I, I want to know what he would be thinking right here Look at as, this. as a coordinator. But mm. boom. keep in oh, mind, man. we've seen some big hits, and the receivers have held, held on, on going to football. Graham has got a tough group of wide receivers. They may not be as highly touted as the Rat Boys. They can hold their own. Third down and five. Wide. Oh, and he had a wide open receiver again with that route Same that you play. were talking about. Same play. They're looking duck smart enough to keep going back. He can keep going back to the well. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Every time he calls the play, it's wide open. This is a formation. This is something wrong technically in the Florida AM defense. They're not covering this guy. You got two on one. You never lead one defender to cover two wide receivers. But as you see, they was having a blitz there, and the guy that was blitzing hesitated. When you blitz, you got to get there. You can't take your time to hesitate because you got a guy back there in a desperate situation at the cornerback. I don't think. Look at Doug. You Doug. see that man right there? That man was born to coach, fellas. He was born to coach. An assistant at Navy, coached in high school. I mean, he wanted to coach. You could tell he wanted to teach young men, and Doug Williams has done a good job at here at Grambling State since he's become the head coach. What was his name back when it began? What was the name of that school? Louisiana Normal. Louisiana Normal. Louisiana Normal. <laughs> Louisiana Northern, but he, he, he wasn't there then. No, he wasn't there. <laughs> I just wanted to... 629 left here in the third quarter. It's still Grambling State in the lead. Born to coach. He was in high school at Northeast High where he was coaching. They were 13 and 1. He was an assistant at Navy, then went to the Scottish Sycamores of the World Football League. He was also a scout for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Then he coached at Morehouse for one year before moving on to Grambling State and replacing, of course, the great Eddie Robinson. More importantly, when you talk about Doug Williams, you got to use one word, pioneer. He was a pioneer in terms of black quarterbacks, especially black quarterbacks in the Super Bowl. 1997, Super Bowl MVP, four touchdowns in the second quarter against the Denver Broncos. So here goes Florida A&M right now with the football. Six and a half minutes left here in the third quarter, and they trail by two. And this is a team, like I said, averaged 48 points per game because they can go for the big plays and get you quickly. This pass was intended for Jaque Nunley. But you know why the pass wasn't complete? Because... Mr. Taylor, the guy we talked about in the beginning of the show, was all in the quarterback's face. You take a look here. Quarterback's going to roll a little bit. They're not necessarily going to fool Taylor. Here he comes with the lick. Whack! And throw him into the turf. I don't like that part of it. But, <laughs> but you know, the thing about that, the wide receiver, they had a wide receiver trying to block Mr. Taylor. That, that turf is hurts. not happening. <laughs> that, that, that turf hurts. So you don't wish that on anybody. Second down and ten. Gray getting in the shotgun. Very few times you're going to see him not in the shotgun. This is the march, Blanks, and you got to jump on that football because that could also be dangerously behind the quarterback right. and then be called a fumble. That's two bad plays that went nowhere. That, and, and every time you have a bad play that leaves the quarterback's hands in the form of a pass, it hurts his confidence. And now he's got to throw, go for third and long. We were talking about convertible third downs. Now he's facing a third and long rather than a third and three and four. And we said all day throwing deep against his defense is going to be a pretty tough thing to do. It is. He's completed 53% of his passes coming in, but in this game he's completed just 12 of 27. Can't run for 10 yards. And Gray again on the run. He did it. Oh, <laughs> right. wrong. Nice little move. Be wrong. Ideally you would say third and 10 is not necessarily something you're going to do by running. Right. 
He's an athlete. And, and, an athlete. and when you look at a guy who's 6'4", 230-something pounds, to watch his feet move like that. Yeah, he, you know what? That means he can lower his shoulder and get that extra inch. <laughs> but that found a little crease. Good block by the wide receiver. Great block. Great block. Isaac Brown out there making the block number two. So with that pickup, it's first and ten. They're coming from. He's checking. He may go for something deep here. Nobody deep in the post. Calling off the blitz, man. See, he's calling off the blitz. Well, he's going for the deep one. There it is. He's got him. He's got him. Oh! That pass actually in and out of the hands of Charles Allen, the sophomore from Miami. But boy, he had him. But that linebacker came again. Right, right. I it's like tough. the call. I like the call there. They're going to play one-on-one -on -one and have nobody in the middle of the field, one-on-one -on -one outside, take a deep shot at it. It was first down, you come back and get it later. You don't like to get in the hit, but he knew what he was doing the whole time. Way to put good air on the ball. Mr. Taylor's, <laughs> Mr. Taylor's going to make sure you know who he is before the game's over. They do quarterbacks come back in the huddle and start cussing you guys out when they take shots like that time in and time out? The sorry ones do. <laughs> the, sorry ones do. the guys that got talent in fours, they know that it can happen at any time. Second and ten. Gray looks like he's setting up the screen. And he just threw that one. Great coverage by Grambling State as Mark Franks was the intended receiver. Antoine Lawrence sniffed out the screen, grabbed the running back, which was the smart thing to do. If you have a screen pass and the running back's being covered by a big 300-pound defensive tackle, you're not going to get any screen plays off. I noticed my uh, fam, you offensive lineman there, are not moving their feet laterally real good. And it can't be tied because Bramlin has controlled the first half and most of the third quarter. And that lateral movement important, especially when pass blocking. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. And they love to throw the football. Third long again. Three receivers split to the left of Gray. Gray flushed out of the pocket, going to try to run for 10 again. Is he going to do so? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gray said, I'll show you. I'm you ain't going to let me quiet. pass. I will go and run with it, and I can make plays. We have a, a lineman down on the field. Second consecutive time that Gray has been able to run for a first down for 10 yards. Take Everybody's covered. We got a guy coming out of the backfield, but they sitting and waiting on him right there. Quinn sees this, takes off running, looks for his blocker and his receiver, turns it up, got enough speed and strength to reach out there and get the first down. Those are some of the intangible things that make you a great quarterback. Now, if you're not going to let me beat you with my arm, I can beat you with my feet. More importantly, I can beat you with my intelligence. He realizes that they're dropping seven defensive backs, and they've got a five-on-seven matchup. The odds aren't in his favor. It takes some poise to be able to go and run for 10 yards and know ahead of time that that's probably going to be the best chance of getting a first down. Well, we've, we've got an injury on the field. Right. It looks like a knee. And it was interesting. And I think we may have this injury on replay. Let's take a look. And big number 72. Oh, man. Getting that leg, that knee. I think that's Shelton Mot uh, Cedric Moulton. And is Cedric is just coming back just from coming injury. Back. Yes. Just coming back. In fact, we talked to them yesterday, and they said they were thinking of not playing him right. because it was a non-conference game, and they were playing on turf, and they wanted to protect him. And so he hurt the right knee before, and now what he's doing is overcompensating. So when this guy hit him, he wasn't able to get it out of the way because he had it planted into the ground. There's Coach Bogan. One of the old coaches when I was at Florida a and m walking around <laughs> concerned because, you know, he's a running back coach, so, hey, he wanted to get something going. <laughs> I need my so, back. So he needs his big lineman to make things happen. Settle down, Coach Bogan. Well, we can only hope that Moten is okay. But, boy, you, you would assume that at this point, that Billy Joe is now sitting up there in the booth saying, I told you so. Right. I told you so. We should not have played this young man. <laughs> he was a projected starter at the beginning of the year. Got hurt against Delaware State, their first game of the season. It's pretty tough to keep a true competitor off the football yeah. field. I don't know if it's, you know, as a coach, you can only hear an athlete telling you, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, so many times before you start thinking. So who do we bring in? Uh, 69, Sherry, Sherry uh, Turner. Uh, Let's look and find out who we bring in because they got a lot of talent up there on the offensive line and they got, they got depth. So 
There's Cedric Moten right there limping off. I know he's concerned, uh, but he's in capable hand. Florida and them got the best trainers money can buy. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that 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 green and orange is starting to seep from underneath that shirt, Jay. I'm telling you. Uh, First and ten. Gray. Oh, that one almost picked off. It was tip. By two Grambling defenders. Two Grambling defenders, and then Gentry almost made the play. And Byron Addison was the last man with a chance with his hand on the ball. And has still yet to pick up a pick this year, but has two for his career. Got to have those. You got to make those plays. Your defense, your defense has been on the field for a while. Offense needs to get the ball back in their hands. Got to have that one. He wishes he could take that one back. Second and ten. And Quinn Gray. Just 12 of 30. Who would have thunk it? And that one is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Boy, they've been active defensively, especially that front eight for right. Grambling State. They're feeling good. They got the confidence going. And right now, you, you can put a, uh, a freshman in there, and he's going to feel like he can get there. I mean, <laughs> hey, when you, hey the, uh, let's admit, these guys were underdogs coming in. But right now, the, the more you let underdog scratch and scratch, that's why he's going to dig to the top and become a bulldog. And things going to get ugly. Calvin Arnold was the man who got the big mitts on that one. So it's third and ten. Last time we saw third and ten, in fact, the last two times, was we got a flag on the field. Again. Substitute infraction against the offense. Twelve men on the field at the, end at the snap. <laughs> Let's keep that mic open all day. <laughs> we don't have a huddle, but you know what? I thought I saw a huddle. I don't know about you, uh, Nate. Nate. Nate with the family, he didn't see a huddle yeah, either. Yeah, I saw a huddle. <laughs> and I see right now Coach Billy thinking he's seeing a huddle too. Brings up interesting situation. We saw him rush for it on the past two third and ten. Now it's third and fifteen. Can you run for third and fifteen? No, he can't do that. You can run for it, but I'm not gonna doubt it. He don't see, I don't think you can run for third and fifteen. <laughs> Look at your third down conversions. Florida and M seven of eleven. They're gonna blitz him. Well, they were losing that, remember, early on in the game, and they've come back and picked it up. Yeah. For a quick throw here. They look like they may have been trying to pull Grambling State offside. What do you think? Yeah, maybe too much time. <laughs> I think they confuse themselves. <laughs> Three different thoughts. The lay of the ball game against the offense. Third down. Third and 20, get your best draw play out. Boy, Billy Joe, 27 years of coaching. And you know he's hot looking at his team commit these. Hey, they say he's the master of illusion. We will see. <laughs> Third and 20. Get your draw play out, but not throw an interception. You don't want to do that. Go for it. Gray. That's room, but he's going to throw this time downfield. Had a receiver and a good defensive play this again swag. by Mr. Addison. Byron Addison has also been around the football as well. Talked to Doug about him yesterday. He said uh, one of the things about him, he doesn't have the best foot speed in the world, but he's the best zone technique cornerback we have on the team, which is why I feel comfortable having him in there. Right, right here, he drops back. He got a lot of time. You know, they got about seven, eight guys back deep. He just takes off and, hard and just throws it. I almost got it picked up, but you can look at that as a deep punt, too, if you were to intercept it. So now they do punt the football. Takes a couple of bounces. This time field by Williams. And Williams returns it about seven yards. And that was in danger of being really deep in their own territory. And if he hadn't handled that football right, he could have possibly fumbled it. And Florida A&M would have had great field position. But would have, could have, should have, but didn't. <laughs> way to say 511 left here in the third quarter and Grambling State leads 12 to 10 and we just talked about the fact that this is such a low scoring game Florida A&M averaging 48 points per game how about Grambling last three games they've outscored their opponents 138 to 15 so you figured they would be able to put some points on the board as well just 12 hey good or good this is a lot so here we go first and 10 Tigers elect to keep the football on the ground and 14 Rattlers hit him. <laughs> and you're only supposed to have 12. 11, 12? <laughs> what am I thinking? You're supposed to have 11. Michael Young with the 10. You can tell I'm with the, the Rattlers. But you, see, but you see right there, Doug comes right out. 
hands it off, tries to soften them up, make them pull them eight guys up in the box so he can get Scotty and the rest of the guys over. Second down and eight. High formation with Young and Boudouin as your backs. Fakes it to Young, and now he's going to be flushed out of the pocket, and Himes gets back to the line of scrimmage. And forced out of bounds by the linebacker, Patrick Burroughs. Andy Parsons with great pursuit on the play. Yeah, I got right here, right here, the quarterback does not stay in the pocket. He runs away from his pocket, runs right into the defensive guy. If he'd have stayed in his pocket and waited a little more and gave Scotty Anderson and the other guys a chance to work, he probably could have made something happen. He's got to stay in the pocket. I know he has a lot of talent, but all you know, but you got to know when and when not to run. You know, against Louisville, Randy Himes was sacked ten times. <laughs> so you right. can get a little gun shot. Gun shot. Wow. <laughs> but he has no reason here. He's had a great running game. Right. The offense finally been doing a super job. Just settle down and let it happen. Third down and eight. And here's Himes. This time throwing off his back foot and almost intercepted. That was Anthony Cola almost going the other way as the pass was intended for Levi Washington. Great job of pursuing by the defensive back. Quarterback's got to be careful throwing the ball to the flat late. Those are the ones that you normally see get intercepted for touchdowns rather than just interception. So, so I, if I'm thinking like Billy Joe, he said, let's play a field position game. Let's, we, our offense is not doing what, it's, what it usually does, so let's, let's punt and, 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 and uh, make it a, a field position game. Doug Williams commented yesterday that it's been field position that has really hurt his football team. And they look like they almost got a piece of that one. I think they did get a piece of it. That's why there's not a flag there. And that ball will be down at the 48-yard line. Oh, out. they did throw the flag late. Doug talked him into it. <laughs> nice play, <laughs> nice play <laughs> Doug. <laughs> the G-man coach, the G-man coach, Doug Williams, got his tummy gone out. <laughs> and making things happen. How's the coach make a play? Hey, he made a play there. <laughs> Fifteen-yard penalty. The pressure up the middle. I thought they might have got a piece of this. Let's take a look. Oh, if he didn't get a piece of it, that's definitely a fifteen-yard penalty. Andre Brooks is the guy called. Yeah. Yeah. What he should have done right there was gone to the referee and start acting like his hand was hurt. Like, ouch! <laughs> I tipped that. That got him I off got the hook. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Look, look, watch Doug, look, Doug's on the sideline. What's taking you so long? <laughs> hey, Doug, you ain't gonna last long. Bobby Knight, but hey. <laughs> Bobby. That's Slaughter, roughing the kicker. First down. That could be a momentum changer. It could. That could be a, a momentum, momentum changer. changer. Florida a was doing what they wanted to do. They were winning the battle field position. Let's take our, a look at our 1-800 collect connection play of the game and any surprise 98 yarder that was the, definitely the connection of the game set the tempo look at the Grambling band behind it set the tempo for Grambling early on the big player Scotty Anderson with that play right there the wide receiver for Grambling State and that gave them the six to nothing lead this 1-800 Collect connection play of the game was brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the easy way to save. They're big enough to play something else. Man. They shouldn't be kicking. I mean, he shouldn't be kicking. That, that's <laughs> bad, man. Cat that big, going to be a punter, man. So with 45 seconds left here in the third quarter, Florida a and Looking at their undefeated season going down the drain if they can't start to muster some sort of offense against Grambling State. They move the ball somewhat, but Gray must have seen something there and quarterback draw and big pickup and then three flags come in. And look at Joe. <laughs> yeah. You need to stay there, Joe. That's the only thing they really had to celebrate all day. Don't go anywhere. Don't give yeah. her back the pom-poms. Yeah, Joe got them <laughs> Halloween eyes. Don't even what a thing would be. <laughs> yeah, man. That was a be great a play mask. by the quarterback. You know what? That was Actually, face mask. That was the play. Those were the eyes that Quinn Gray must have had when he <laughs> saw that hole in the middle and when that quarterback dropped. Yeah. This is the play that fam needed. 
to get the momentum totally on their side. 22-yard pickup for Gray, and then here comes the face mask. Oh, nice stiff arm. They must be going for his eyes. That's the second time today they've gotten him in the eyes. <laughs> there you are again. Starting to feel for the quarterback. That was Calvin Pearson. And Doug knows, I mean, his team has still got a huge battle ahead of them trying to hold off these rattles. Still in the third quarter. And it's just a two-point ball game. Gray on first down. And in and out of the hands of his receiver, Isaac Brown. Taylor got back to the quarterback again with a host of others. Uh, <laughs> he brought his buddies with him. He brought time. his buddies with him. And, you know, uh, Quinn Gray is taking a beat. He's showing that he's tough. Look at this play here. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Just hey, hey. up. After a while, he's he, he's going to access off his line. Hey, man, pick up somebody. Just hit another a color jersey. I ask you that if you get in the huddle and they start talking to you. all It's just a nice way you can do it. <laughs> yes, it's I nice. understand. And this play goes nowhere. Good coverage by the secondary. Jaquay Nunley made the catch, and now they're trying to plead their case. Do we have a flag over there? Yes, there is a flag dropped at midfield. Looks like we're going to have another face mask here looking by the reaction of a couple of Grambling players. And all of a sudden, with all these flags, and that is a penalty against Grambling State, with all these flags, this game has bogged down. Doug is not going for it. You got your one call, Doug. You got your one call there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Maybe, maybe Doug has a point. What you think? I doubt it, but maybe, he has, maybe he's got a point here. He kicks it out to Nunley, oh. out, of the, out of the backfield. Look like a, if it's a flag, it's a five-yarder, right? It should be a five-yarder. Yeah, he, was he, he released the face mask. Yeah. And that's what they did. They just marked it down to the 45-yard line, so that's all they gave them, five yards, making it looks like second down and five. A long five. Two seconds left here in the third quarter, and they're not going to get this play off. So we've played three quarters, and it has not been a high-scoring affair like we thought it would. But it's been a good football game. Quality two football teams game. going at each other, battling, and just two points separates them. Florida A&M will have the football when we come back. As we start the fourth quarter, the Rattlers, thanks to that touchdown by Quinn Gray, trail by just two. It's Florida A&M, 12 to 10. And as we take a look at our Southwest Airlines statistics, after three quarters of play, and you would have thought that Florida A&M with Quinn Gray, ranked among the leaders in Division I AA in passing, would lead in passing yards, but they don't. Belongs to Grambling State. Rushing yards going to Florida A&M, who doesn't even play with a tight end. <laughs> In a game this close, one would assume that the battle is for field position. Right. And Grambling State has been losing this field position play. They haven't been able to get out of their own end throughout the whole second half. But Florida A&M offense is not capitalizing on the work that the defense is doing for them. Well, here's Himes on second and forever. And it's going to be third and forever. Could have a defensive hold. It looked like they lined up Elijah in the... Uh and the slide is a tight end, and he might have been held by number three, I believe. And you can see. Point. Oh, <laughs> not Daryl Vick. <laughs> not my man. He's about my big hitter. The cornerback number three, 5'9", 174, senior. Who already has two picks this year. He may be oh, the boy, he's not, he's not upset. He's got that look, doesn't he's he? He's not arguing. <laughs> got some big guns on him for a little fella, though, ain't he? Been he in the weight room. You know, in 1998, he had six interceptions. And six interceptions is pretty good. Oh, yeah. 5 nine, one, seven, five, that's phenomenal. Yeah. So would it be safe to say he's a playmaker, not on this play, but on previous <laughs> plays? Yes, he has made some plays. <laughs> I know they can hear that, that, that nice band in the back back there. That's that fam you march and rap does it, does, it, does it make you, oh, does it make oh, you it, bounce? Oh, bounce out there. Ten yards from the previous spot, second down. So now they're back in a situation where they don't have to go deep, pick up six, seven yards, and get themselves a first. But well, look at this Florida in there, man. He's going to gonna, gonna, gonna mellow, just mellow and get right back in this game. I'm about to fall asleep. <laughs> ah, that's what we hope Grambling would do. <laughs> uh, that, they that we word again. But I hope they, that's what got, I'm sorry out there in the TV land. I looked like it was the linebacker. 
Russell Brown was caught holding the receiver as Grambling State puts the ball in the middle of the field in the hands of a running back. And let's go on down to Joe Clay. Hey, hey, check this out. Now, I have a report. My man Moten over there on the fam, you got his knee a little, little busted, but he said he'd be back. I did that. Well, man. this is rapper Lil Zane. What's yeah, up, Zane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? Man, he, you out there hitting cats on the field? Hey, I'm hitting them hard, man. I put them out the game, man. I'm sorry, dog. I'm telling y'all, BET Black College Football is off the hook, off the heezy, for sheezy. And you heard it from Joe Cleasy. I'll let y'all, man. For sheezy. I'm with you, Joe. <laughs> hey, Joe, you, we are off the hook, baby, because you about, what, eight series too late? <laughs> But young boy is still sitting there. You can see on his face he's not very happy. He almost oh, no. picked off. Oh. And you know who that was, don't you? Playback. They know Vickers. Darnell Vicks. He's back. He's back. He's trying to yeah, He's trying to put some fire back into this defense for the family rattlers. And finally, <laughs> we got through these got four downs. He's, he's dropping back. He reads it. Good Vic, break on the ball. Vic read the route. He was just hanging back. Well, that was a Making dangerous Making the quarterback play. think he was open, and then he broke onto the ball. That was a nice play by Darnell Vicks. So Brown now will stand back at his 12 to return this punt. Takes it at the 16, looking to get outside. And picks up no yards on that. Great coverage, like you said, for Grambling State. So Florida A&M has the football. The ball is marked at the 17-yard line. They still trail by two. Welcome back to the RCA Dome here in Indianapolis. George Johnson along with Nate Newton and Jay Walker and Joe Claire and there's the trophies. And they need to hide those things because Joe's not too far away. <laughs> well, you know if Joe gets hold of one of those, he often runs. We'll have some stick. <laughs> You'll have something for us. So Florida A&M who trails by two, and you see the scoring per quarters. And those two six-point touchdowns for Grambling State, boy, they didn't get the PATs. And that could really come back to haunt them as they lead by just two. Gray throwing downfield. Good coverage by Grambling right there. Chris Brown stride for stride with the receiver. Yeah, receiver's looking for a flag, man, but you got to just get out there and run. Don't look for nothing now. You got to make something happen. You can't ask for nothing. And that is not good for Tiger fans. Because they're going to move that football 15 yards forward. We talked about the fact that Florida A&M had that high, potent attack. Because they... Face mask. First step defense. Five yards. First down. Because they play so many wide receivers, and you take a look at your leading receivers right now, and you see Jaquay Nunley, five catches, but just 33 yards per catch. And that's a good job by the defensive coordinator from Grambling. I mean, you know these guys like to run after the catch. He's given up the short ball. He's been giving it to them all day. They can have anything they want underneath five yards. And if you look at Nunley's average, he's averaging somewhere around seven yards a catch for a guy that's averaging over 14 for the season. So they're giving up the short pass and just saying, you can get your catches. We're not going to stop you from doing that. We're going to try and stop you from getting the big plays. And so far, it's paid off for them. We're just going to take your rack title away from you. <laughs> the run after the catch. <laughs> Gonna make you the catch boy. <laughs> Hit after the catch. Yeah. 10.32 left here in our football game. You see the score. It's Grambling State leading by two. And another dropped football for Florida a &M. That that's, that's either the third or fourth drop for Nunnally. And, and that's shocking. A guy that's been consistent over the years and through this whole season. Uh, man, that's just unbelievable. And that right here. Quinn drops back, gets set, plant, plants his foot, throws nicely, boom. Nunnally drops it, gives it to him, and leads him out. He could take it and run forever. Uh, that's hurting Quinn's confidence as a quarterback, especially when his number one receiver is dropping balls. At 42 receptions coming into the game, and like Jay said, 13 yards per catch. This time they give it inside the O.J. March Banks. And Another big pickup, and with that carry, he's now over 100 yards for the game. 
If I'm Florida a and I don't understand why you just don't run the ball down the field on them. Graham was not showing you an eight-man box. They're right. Put, they're putting six people in the box, right. sometimes seven. Lean on them. We've been saying to lean on them. Get That's yourself down the field goal. Because that was a great block, block once again by Terry Logan and James Agnew to come up and, and make that block and open up a gigantic hole on the right side. O.J. Marchbanks now with 114 yards carrying. And you can add another three or four yards to that total. Four yards a pop. Four yards a pop. That'll get your first down, first down every 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 time, won't it? Four times three is twelve, right? I, you know me. Don't talk to me about math. Hey, hey, I done Jay, failed math in the second quarter today. Hey Jay, right here, man. As as a quarterback, I, what did you do? Second and five throw here. Uh, quick draw. What would you do here? I probably keep running the ball. I mean, he's got a big hole to run the ball to up top. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, the running back's getting four yards to carry. Make it easier on yourself. Second down and six. Over the middle. Pass is complete. This time, after Nunley makes the catch, he's dragged down by Calvin Pearson. You know, the quarterback, obviously, you would love to beat people with your arm. But every now and then, you know, there are 11 men on the football field. So sometimes you got to give it to somebody else and let them run. With right here on this play here, Quinn is settling down, taking what the defense is giving. Receivers are making sure they catch the ball. Hey, just move the chain slowly. Got a short yard of situation. Oh, yeah. oh. And they give it inside and nothing that doing. Was ugly. The Tigers. They blitzed off the corners real nice. Uh, in the middle, uh, Gremlins uh, stood tall. Just great play defense. Something happened with the snap count there. It seems like the quarterback and the center were the only two that were ready for the snap. Terrence Dukes and Mark Hall in on that tackle. On that fourth down, on that third down situation, so that now forces a fourth. T.J. Smith, who's averaged 41 yards per punt coming in, and guess now who's deep? That's Calvin Spears. For the playmaker, and they're trying to make something happen. Way to kick away from him. end over end. Oh, the family the rebound, the bounce. Oh, boy, and it's down at the four-yard line. So Grambling State starting deep in their territory and yet this is not unfamiliar territory for them we'll have more after this still crowded here at the rca dome the florida a and m looking for their first conference title since 1996. And this is the pageantry of what makes black college football. Uh, all, all the beautiful black women that show up, it's just a great thing to be here in the booth, a uh, long, uh, long distance away, especially with you two married guys. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my top 10. I'm going to say it's my top 10. Can I say it? No, it's our top 10 here, BT. Right. Florida a and at the top. Bethune, Cookman, second, they're undefeated. Texas Southern is undefeated. North Carolina A&T are the defending champs in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, have slipped a little bit. Hampton has climbed out All right, we're and gonna gotten the fifth. You're going to have a hard time convincing me, and I told you this before the game, and I'm going to say it again after the game, especially after this performance, that Grambling's is the number seven ranked team in Black well, let's College. Go back, let's go back to the top ten picks if we can. Arkansas Pine Bluff, who has played extremely well this year, great running game, is sixth. And you say Grambling should be moved up. They're definitely a top five team in terms of Black College football. And they've got nothing more but uh, reiterate that point today. Absolutely. Here's Young on the carry, second down and eight. And he takes it out close to the 15-yard line. And again, let's take a look at these picks. So if you were to move Grambling up, where would you put them? I'm not knocking the other teams, but what I really do think is there aren't six different colleges in black college football that can beat the Grambling Tigers. Right. So it's kind of a tough way to look at it. We're going to see what Arkansas Pine Bluff, they're going to play them. They're going to play Texas Southern. You know, you can't penalize them for the loss and with Louisville. And those are your two question marks. Texas Southern and Arkansas mm -hmm. Pine Bluff. They, we'll see if they're for real as the season goes. Well, they're going to find out next week because that's exactly who Grambling plays, Arkansas Pine Bluff. But Pine Bluff showed us they're not a bad team. They beat Southern here on BET and did it convincingly. How about Southern struggling? And on third down and two, the Rattlers' defense stiffens. It, unique situation in the football game right now. You've got six minutes and 45 seconds left to play. Each team is probably going to touch the football two more times. Each, pos each possession becomes more crucial. Field position is the key, but nobody seems to want to capitalize on it, Nate. And the, and the thing about it, 
The thing about field position, factors playing towards family this time. And with the explosive offense, even though they haven't done anything to this point, it can't happen at any moment. Well, Lawrence Richmond got a bad snap, and because of it, he rushed that punt. Right. And it wasn't much of a punt. And it looks like it bounced out at about the 30-yard line, so I would say that that's a 19-yard punt. And Florida a and in great position when we get back. Let's take a look now at our TIFO play of the game. And it was the 98-yard touchdown play for the wide receiver, Scotty Anderson, in the first quarter that got Grambling State on the board first at 6 to nothing, And that is our TiVo play of the game. Today's play of the game has been brought to you by TiVo. TV your way. And it has just been a dynamic football game. You've seen a lot of different things in this game. Good running, some big time pass plays, good defense, and good coaching. A lot of different variables to this one, and yet it's just 12 to 10. Florida and m trailing, but here they come. This time, they go to Nunley, and he makes the catch and gets about eight yards on the play before being knocked out of bounds by the linebacker, Terrence Dukes. Yeah, Terrence Dukes really put the Dukes up on his head, <laughs> punished him a little bit. Uh, our guys on offense got to get just a little bit more intensity. Our guys. Florida a &M team has to get a little bit more intensity. Oh, Lay off me, fellas. Lay off here because it's looking bad for the rallies. And this time, they go to Isaac Brown, and Brown picks up the first down. Picking up the momentum. They're starting to feel a sense of urgency that we haven't felt from them all game long. And I think your team is going to be okay, Nate. Nah. <laughs> Picking it up a little bit. At least they're they in there rattling. They're <laughs> trying to make a amount of a comeback here. And these guys up in the booth are from Howard University. You have to understand that, Amon. <laughs> down in four. I resent that remark. Good pass over the middle. Caught by T.J. Hines. And we talked about the fact that Florida A&M is committed to turnovers. Talk about it, Jay. It has hurt. It's been the key. I mean, you see right here, the running back, they were going in for a score, and their turnovers have come in every time they've been in the opponent's red zone. That's 27 points, you, or 21 points you've taken off the board, or at least nine, because they have a great kicker. But, you know, the good thing about it, they're still in the game with a chance to win with two minutes left. So on first and ten, Ray, good catch by Nunley, and Nunley take it out of bounds, but we got a flag at the 34-yard line. This may be defensive pass interference. I don't know if it'll matter. Seems like he was on Nunley pretty tough. Quinn Gray is staying solid. He's had... A, a, lot of, a lot of bad passes thrown, but he stands solid. He, he stand within the frame of the, the offense and making plays. He's coming down the stretch. So now they try to sort things out, holding, called against Grambling State. And that's going to be the death of Grambling if they don't hurry up and straighten that out. I mean, they've had 12 guys coming out of the huddle. Yeah. Uh, they've had uh, a couple of face masks. I mean, right now, uh, Doug Williams has got his hand on his hip saying, what in the world is going to look at him? We know it's not on you, Doug. It's not on you. It's on your team. I think one of the key things here about Quinn Gray is he's learned an important lesson here. Although he hasn't played his best football for three and a half quarters, right. he's still in a position to win the football game. One name comes to mind that I think about that was known for doing that was John Elway. When he was right. a rookie, he'd come in the league and throw four picks and put his team in a 17 nothing bind. But he'd come back and win, and all they remember was a two-minute comeback. That's right. Young Elway, boy, was so not special. So a first down for Florida A&M, and we take a look at the penalty situation. And Grambling State has committed 13 penalties for 102 yards. Florida A&M, eight penalties. So we got 21 penalties in this football game. Neither one of the teams deserves to win with that many uh, penalties in the football game. I think the coaches would agree. O.J. March Banks, and Banks, March Banks, that is, carries the ball for another first down, looks like. March, March Bank A. He's looking strong. He's getting strong as the game goes on. He came off of that, that, that left side behind Derrick Gray and Terry Logan, and he made a nice run. Has 137 yards after that 12-yard gain, and they give it back to him. And why not? The clock continues to roll. You're now under two minutes to 
and a half minutes left in the game. And like we talked about before, Juan Vasquez, all he needs to do is connect on a field goal. And Florida A&M walks out of this with one of those steals. <laughs> they stole that victory. A Sorry, speaker. big boy, if they steal this victory, that's what it is. A robbery. We'll have more after this. <laughs> All Classic has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines brings freedom to the net with affordable fares and frequent flights. Log on for low fares at www.southwest.com. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of e-freedom. And by TiVo, TV your way. And by Western Union, money transfer, the fastest way to spend money worldwide. 17 left here in this football game and though Grambling State has the lead they are in danger of allowing the Rattlers to get on the board because Florida A&M now is at the 17 yard line and they are within field goal range I would assume of Juan Vasquez who has hit 9 of 11 after connecting earlier on a field goal of 29 yards Take the football, play safe, anything less cost you the game. Aaron shotgun formation. They've been doing it all game long, folks. They love to keep it wide open. Go the Great. Oh, no, he did. Intercept. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Anything less will cost you the game. Calvin oh. Spears makes the interception in the end zone. And look at that Grambling State sideline. If, if, if we go, oh my, you can feel it. If, if you go back to that place, to what happened, from your pre-snap read, I saw what the quarterback saw. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage with his number one player, who was Nunley, against the defensive back. Somewhere along the line, they got on the wrong page. You had the one-on-one -on -one coverage. He didn't set his feet. Nunley got tangled up and went another way. And Spears just dropped back, and it was, it was a gimme. I mean, you would switch Great the throw out of bounds. Nice protection. He got hit there right there at the end, but I still couldn't stop the uh, interception there. Yeah. Quinn Gray throws his third interception of the ball game. Had no interceptions, and yeah, love is in the air if you're a Grambling State fan. Oh, As this time, they give it to the fullback, Boudouin, but there's no love on the sideline for that young man right there, Quinn Gray. That flag, was, that flag that was just thrown is very important. If that's against Florida A&M, that helps out. I mean, if that's against Grambling, that helps out Florida A&M a whole lot. They'll get another chance. And it stops the clock for the two minutes. Mm -hmm. As I was saying, Gray, now 18 of 44 for 200 yards and three interceptions. Coming into this game, you would have never thought that. He's played phenomenal this year. They're growing pain. He's going to get a lot better. We were all talking about him yesterday. I mean, to be a pure quarterback, he can do it all. He's going to have better days. You know, what you have to do now as a quarterback is you can't let your teammates see you like this. You, you know, you've got a good chance of getting the football back. You may not have much time, but you've got a good chance of getting the football back. And they need to feed off of it. That clock is still rolling. We're under two minutes left. First and ten. The Rattlers have got to make a stop here. Their undefeated season in danger of dissipating right before their eyes. Inside handoff to Boudouin, and he takes it up the middle for about five yards as we go down to Joe Claire standing by on the sideline. Man, I'm saying the same thing y'all at home are saying. Ah! Can you believe it? What, what, do, what do you have to say? Man, that was just a bad call. We've been a field goal range. Why would he even throw the ball in the end zone? That was dumb. There you have it. That pretty much sums up the sentiment down here on the <laughs> sidelines. Back to y'all up top, man. <laughs> hey, you know, it's amazing how everybody can become a coach, you know, when things get to looking bad. Uh, that's why he's in the band out there dancing before. Because <laughs> he got to face, face that pressure. <laughs> he doesn't know what it's like. He doesn't know what it's like. You know, you don't tell him how to twirl his baton. You don't tell the uh, coach how to call his plays. <laughs> so that's Joe Claire, who's been on camera all game long. But doing the game up here in the booth has been myself, George Johnson, along with Jay Walker. And hey, Jazz. 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 Hey, Jazz.
They've been talking about the people on the sideline. Look at it. As soon as they get the yeah. opportunity to get on camera, it's like, hey. Yeah, right. <laughs> what I say? You got to use the limelight. You got to like, use these looks right now. We all over each other. Yeah. Yeah. I'm used to the limelight, like, baby. Three Super Bowls. So we don't have radio oh, voices up here. Yeah. We got television faces. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 138 left in the football game. And again, Grand Lake State gets it up the middle. And oh, that's it. Big. Gets the first down. Rodney Boudouin has run hard all game long and gets the first down, and that may advice the game, fellas. All they needed was one first down. They can take knee, knees here. Look here. Right behind the big center. Big Mac, Big Larry Mac moves him out, just pushes him off the ball. And Big Boudin. Boy, the human sausage is getting up in the... <laughs> is he and How about John Battle? Hey. Is that Andouille sausage or is that... Uh, I, I don't know sausage. what it is, man. That'd be that Lake Charles thing, though. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He is running hard. Hey, John Battle got ran over, over. on that play. And look at him. Still trying to bounce and get to the outside. Smart enough and to this time, down. Battle came flying and said, I'm going to get me a piece of this. Right now, they just need to take a knee. Don't worry about it. Fam, you just have to go back home, brothers, a flight, a bus trip, and regroup. And going to go home with their first loss of the season. Meanwhile, for this guy right here, who is still in the running for the West Crown of the SWAC, I mean, this is a great win for him. He's got Arkansas Pine Bluff after this ball game, and he'll be going into that game with a victory over Florida A&M behind him. As for Billy Joe, next week, they have the biggest game on their schedule as they take on North Carolina A&T, the defending champions in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And you don't want to lose any game, but if it's a game that they may can afford to let slip by, is this game here because they have to stay on track in the MEAC to, to win that crown to try to get some type of home field advantage right. in the playoffs. Well, if you win the MEAC crown, you get that automatic bid to right, the playoffs. Right. So that's the number one thing you want to do. But last year, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference put two teams in the playoffs. Right. They had North Carolina A&T in there as well as Florida A&M. One of the things you want to make sure of, because, you know, we all talked to the coaches yesterday. They've set the bar so extremely high for themselves. Right. They said MEAC, they want to be MEAC champions, black college national champions, and national champions. they got to make sure because, you know, this is a step backwards in terms of the black college national championship race. But it's also, uh, you know, they're still where they want to be in terms of the MEAC conference race right. in terms of getting to the playoffs and winning the national championship. So you hope the guys just don't fall too hard. You want what we call like a soft landing. Right. It's a loss, but it's a non-conference loss, take be, it as it is. It's going to be interesting to see what happens to them in the Division I AA polls, too. They came in ranked fourth and see how far they fall after this one. They, they got beat by a very good Grambling team. And, George, I'm going to mess with you again. They got beat <laughs> by a top-five team in black college right, football. Right. So get that number seven out of here. Get that We're on the air. They Apologize. move up. They move up. They move up. They move up. <laughs> Fam fall to five or six. They move up. Wow, that's a that's a that's a big fall. Oh yeah, they're, they're gonna have to fall. I mean, these other teams are undefeated too. Yes. So it wouldn't be right. And they not let's take over this poll. Let's take over this poll. Let's call it the J and Nate poll. It, it got, got better for me. You, know. you know, the football knowledge just lies within us. Yeah, you know, you that's definitely where it comes from. He's got the, the voice for the TV. We've got the no hat. So it's just about dropping the one knee right. as we come up. For the last play of the game, and now look at Doug Williams. Look at what a win. Team, man. Doug Williams that. told us yesterday, yeah. he said, George, I've seen the polls. I know how good Florida A&M is. I just hope these kids don't realize it. Right. Now they do show that they realized it all along. Last comments from you, Nate. What did you think about the football game? It was a great game. Uh, Grambling offensive line did exactly what they needed to do was control the running game, slow them down on the passing game. Uh, Frank uh, Livingston had a super game in uh, the big center, Larry. Matt, he did his job. Game full of surprises. No, none of these coaches thought they'd have won this game 12-10. So once again, our final score, Grambling State knocks off Florida and in by the score of 12-10. The Rattlers fall to 5-1. Our next game here on Black Entertainment Television will be Alabama State taking on Alabama A&M. That is slated for October 28th, Saturday evening. Be there or be square. For Nate Newton, Jay Walker, Joe Claire, I'm George Johnson. We'll see you when we see you. Peace.
This weekend trumpets itself as host of the Bayou Classic. And for Southern University, the last seven years have been all smiles as they've been able to beat their in-state rivals from Grambling State University.